Okay. That's to, page 119, 120, by the way. To get started on assessing, uh, you know, one of the things to look at with the assessing budget is when you look down into the revenues column, the gray, everything that's in gray is what's uh, reimbursable 50% from CAMS. Excuse me? Carries portion. In, car because it, yeah. the number, the number is in gray, it's some of that represent carries wages and benefits and others are his assistance right. benefits but basically all of that everything that's in gray is reimbursable from Camden that's what we track and so if you go down to the bottom that's what we um, under the revenues the Camden reimbursement is sixty nine thousand and four dollars based on the budget 104 Six, <laughs> 69 no no 69 104 is what I've got Sixty nine zero zero four. Oh, there's, there's another. There's a hundred dollars in copies. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yep. But the reimbursement from Camden is sixty nine zero zero four. Um, so going through that, and you know, one of the things with with assessing, with assessing like finance, some of the stuff that they that's done in behind the scenes is. Done quietly, you don't, it doesn't get a lot of uh, a lot of press, a lot of um, fanfare because it's it's the, the work is done um, in the background. Um, but you know, with the quality of assessing that we have, we've gone eight years without any any litigation of any any um, any <clears throat> type. Um, and th with the agreement with uh, Camden now. And we share, can't you know, carry with Camden, and we also share. We use um, um, Caitlin from Camden to help here in, in in Rockport. It means that the assessor Kerry is able to focus on some of the higher elevation things and 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 get at um, doing some more um, uh, some more assessing and actually chasing value. Um, so in the past year, um, he's brought in working with uh, a, a, a consultant that we brought in for, I think it cost us a couple thousand dollars. $2,500. $2,500. Uh, basically brought in another $5.5 million in, um, in assessed value um, that we would have missed normally. Uh, a lot of towns miss that stuff, but the work that Kerry and the consultant did was able to bring in another $5.5 million in uh, assessed value and also another Two point one million dollars in um, ad additional value from the Samoset timeshare. So that's a that's a total of s in a year when we didn't see any real growth of seven point seven million dollars of new value that was chased down by the assessor and uh, the, by the, by Kerry having the time to do that extra work rather than dealing with the day to day mundane stuff of. Uh, of of just running the office because um, with the three of them, with Caitlin and and Carrie and also uh, Hannah. Hannah working, they're able to cover the office and get all of the work done. Um, so that that's a, I mean, that's a big deal for us, uh, particularly in a time when we're, uh, you know, where we've lost so much value, clawing back some of that value is really important to us. Um, and I, you know, I don't know if, if we got any growth other than that, did we have any? It was a couple. Last of year was totally flat. Totally, totally flat. So the only value we had is what we were able to chase down. <clears throat> so um, you'll see the, you know, the part-time assessor is. Uh, I mean, the administrative assistant um, is there. That's uh, Hannah that works in the office when you first come in the door. Um, but if you go down through the purchase and contractual services, you'll see um, there's some vision increases for vision software. Um, and um, the number uh, on 3015, that could get reduced by $10,000 because of the work Kerry did with the vision company. They reduced the cost to us. Uh, we budgeted $22,680 which includes a bunch of things, but that 15,000 of that was the new vision software upgrade. Mm -hmm. um, and so they've uh, dropped that down so that we're only gonna be paying them 5,000. Um, because Carrie, as I think I mentioned at a select board meeting or previous no. budget meeting, 
that the work Kerry did over that the, the past six months, six or eight months, I believe, um, has helped them out. It's helped us out. It's given us uh, a, a software program that we had a hand in developing. And so it will work exactly the way we want it to, hopefully. That's, the plan. <laughs> That's the plan. And in, in, uh, so they've, they've had somebody that they felt they could trust to help uh, you know, be the beta tester of this. And it's, it's, it's going to save us uh, an additional $10,000, so a total of $15,000. Um, so what should that number be? Should it be? It should be 10,000 less, so 12, 680. Oh, 12, 10,000 less, okay. It could go down. We're already taking out a 5,000. Oh, you already took out five? Right, yeah. okay. The, the extra, the 10 was an additional 10,000. Yep. Okay. So, um, you know, the next is the web hosting is the Map Geo. Um, and so the planning, public works, and assessing all split the uh, web hosting for Map Geo GIS system. Um, I don't know if any of you have used that system. Um, you probably use it all the time. I am on it at least once a day, probably several times a day. Um, it's my, you know, it's my go-to, and I think you, for you, it would be your go-to thing. It saves you from having to come in the office and, yeah. you know, get all that stuff. So it's a huge, a huge savings for you. But it's also a huge savings for us because now people like. Peter don't have to come into the office and take we time. take our time to deal with it. They can get exactly what they're looking for when they want it. And they, you can do that at 10 o'clock at night when the kid's in bed, you know, which is a, it's a, it, there's a cost to it, but um, it's, a, it's a valuable service and I think people use it. I use it all the time. Public access is really good um, yeah. and it's, it's easy to use. I don't know if anybody, people around the table, you just look at it every once in a while just to see what you are or what your neighbor is or something like that. And, and for that money, for the public, and it's not difficult to use. It's not one of these no. things where you have to have a PhD to figure out how to use it. It's actually fairly easy to use, so it's, it's a very where, good. Where do we get instructions on how to access it? Uh, right on the town website. Town yeah. website. Yeah. It's under the assessing page under MapGeo. Um, I should be the poster child for ease of use because if I can use it and navigate it, it's easy. Um, but it's got very useful information in it um, and it's very helpful. And that's, as we talked about uh, the ortho imagery, that discussion was <clears throat> the ortho imagery will improve the quality of this piece, correct, Kerry? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So the ortho imagery, which comes in someplace else in the budget, but uh, for the purchase of the, the upgraded ortho in imagery will improve the quality of the aerial photography so that it'll, this, uh, this will be even more useful as we go forward. <coughs> uh, line uh, professional ser services 3060, that is the line where the 20% of... Uh, the Camden uh, assistant is comes out of that. We uh, we we use Caitlin's time for the assistant about twenty percent of the time. So that's uh, how much is that? Is that all of the, all of Caitlin? Yeah. Fifteen six is all of Caitlin's time. Um, and the advantage to that, as we talked about a little bit earlier, is that um, we have basically two heads thinking working on projects and. When, when it comes time for inspections, those go a lot faster because two people can go to the site and they can, and they can go through that inspection much quicker. And in these days, it's, it's, I believe it's better to have two people go to an inspection than certainly one because, um, uh, you know, you never know uh, what's going to happen at that inspection. So there's a... Uh, Jan. Is, is 15 and 6... 20% of her salary? 20% of her salary. Salary and benefits. Yes, salary and her benefits. Salary and benefits. Mm -hmm. There seems to be a discrepancy if you look at the supporting page. It says 15000 even. Yeah. Might just be a typo. Yeah. It's the 15 to 6. Yeah. The 15 to 6 is right, I presume. Yeah. Yes. Those numbers were provided from Camden. Uh, so then training... Uh, <clears throat> mileage reimbursement. The mileage reimbursement is uh, for the administrative assistant that works in the office if she has to do any driving around. Um, 
Which this one lodging is for the different uh, training that Carrie Carrie goes to, and um, also that uh, if Hannah's going to any, is Hannah? Not, she's not in lodging now. She's not in any lodging. Um, uh, there's a lot of training uh, that that they do, and and actually Carrie does here. Um, one of the things that Carrie does is tomorrow there's a assessors association meeting at the at our uh, Richardson room, and there'll be. 25 or 30 assessors from around the area that will be participating in a training, um, which is monthly, monthly held at the at the Richardson Room. You know, it depends on the number of uh, the, the whatever he has going on, but there could be you know 25 or 30 assessors um, here at any given point once a month. So dues and memberships are for all of his different uh, different professional organizations having to do with assessors and Hannah's membership and um, but everything that's gray we bill out half to Camden um, training and education is um, you know for the different conferences and training that they do which is um, supplies and when you get down to the capital items you see the uh, the vision software oh the the, the capital uh, items under computer equipment that's for us to purchase a, a server to house the vision software if we didn't own the server we we could not we could choose not to own our own server but it would cost us six thousand dollars a year for them to store our information so having our own server, which gets backed up at the police station, I believe, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, having our own server backed up at the police station um, <clears throat> seems like the way to go. Um, so the, our, our um, information will be stored in-house. Um, you know, $6,000 a year for, to store information seems like a lot. If it was $1,000 a year, that might be something different, but six. I mean, we can... Ex expected life of that server is what? Five to seven years. Okay. Can I ask, I want to go back up to 3320, which is listed as telephone, but you said it's actually for the Vision Software server. Which one? 3320. No, that's just the phone. That's just phone. Phone and his. Well, it says, it says phone, but I thought somebody said that that's actually for the server. Mm. You know, cost of running it or something. No, Carrie, it's for his phones in the office, and then he has a um, wireless router type thing that he can get internet on his laptop while he's out doing inspections. Okay. So it's for those two things. I'm just wondering whether whether uh, telephone is in 220th century a term. <laughs> that, uh, that, that stuff that goes towards our IT yeah. should be noticeable. Could, yeah. could be listed as computer equipment or right. something like that rather than as telephone mm -hmm. yeah, he, he, he does have a laptop a little smaller than this one so when he goes out and does inspections he's able to enter the data in right there yeah and uh, it just down, automatically downloads to oh the, I, no, I have no complaint yeah. about the device mm -hmm. I just I just yep. think that so it that, looks like that, telephone is that a if new you spell it that way it looks like telephone. It's, not, <laughs> it's more than double the previous uh, year it should we missed it in last year's budget or this current year's budget. We missed the, um, the web connector the, thing. Yeah. So we missed it, but we've only, we haven't paid out. <coughs> You've only got uh, 200 and something dollars left for the year as of December. Well, true, but you've got 1,780 to Jan's <coughs> reasoning. It's a 107% increase. Yeah, but that number probably only represents through November because you get the December bill in January as you would any of your utilities. <coughs> so, so if you go down to uh, computer equipment again, the server is one thing, and then the uh, mapping. Uh, if you go down to seventy four ten, that's the ortho imagery. If you, if you were listening, there was a discussion about whether to try and buy that out of this year's budget or not, and the decision was that we could we could wait and just budget for it this budget this year and put it in the budget and the money that that was. Um, we're going to roll over money that will go into the um, UFB that will um, help offset this cost. Uh, but the, as I said, the ortho imagery will imp greatly improve the quality of the photography 
um, and the the and the amount of value that we get out of that. <clears throat> Carrie, could you give the Reader's Digest version of that for maybe some of the members of the Budget Committee who didn't sure. weren't familiar with the discussion we had earlier? Sure. The the Ortho Imagery Project, the federal government, the state, and the county have teamed up to to some degree subsidize um, the towns. In, in acquiring this photography. It's pretty expensive for towns to do it on their own. <clears throat> so what these grants do, they, they pay most of the fee, and all we have to do if we wanted is to buy what they call buy up into higher quality photography. Um, so the base level started out a few years ago at 24 inches. Now the base level is 18 inches, but it's really not usable. Uh, it's, it's okay for some very general work, uh, but not really that usable for mapping and things like that. Um, if without, without the county, state, and federal government participating, that 22000 would be somewhere probably in the 60s or something like that. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, quite a, it's quite a good deal for us. Um, what, is, what, is the, what is the registration now? It's going to be... Um, three inch. Three inch. Three so inch. the pixels okay. are three inches, if you can imagine it, yeah. as opposed to two feet. Right. Okay. So what that means is you can get closer down to the ground. Your view can come closer down to the ground because the pixels are small. Yeah, I understand. It's, it's three inch. <clears throat> so it, and it, and it, when the program was originally, this is the first year that they've changed the condition of the program with the contractor. <clears throat> it used to be that <clears throat> when they flew Knox County, you bought in or you missed out. <laughs> and the way the program has changed now is that you can. Uh, you can essentially, we, we can, they're flying Knox County this spring, but they got their budget numbers out late. We couldn't budget it. So they're going to allow us to, to fly it in the uh, next year. And when that's, which is a, quite a departure from the program. And he explained it to me that the reason that they built that flexibility into the schedule is, let's say they're scheduled to fly Knox County and it's cloudy here and they can't do it, it's raining here, whatever, the, the conditions don't allow it, they can go to Fort Kent or they can go to Ports, you know, uh, Portland or somewhere else and where the weather's better and fly it. So it, it actually is a win-win. It allows us to budget smartly and it allows them flexibility in, in uh, taking better advantage of the weather. And, and the options are to buy up to the three-inch level and there are, are there other options? There's for three, six, 12, 18. We have six inch right now. Okay. So how much? I mean, it's a seventy-five percent increase geometrically, but but how much realistically is it going to do for you? It'll do quite a lot. When I, when we spoke about the select board meeting, the board asked me to check out and look at what three inch looked like mm -hmm. uh, because one of the things I said was when I'm when I'm trying to map something from a deed and I'm looking and they're talking about follow the stone wall or cross the stream I can't see the stream or the stone wall oh. at three inches I can mm -hmm. not all the time very clearly but I can see enough in some cases I saw it very clearly in other places I was able to see the indication of a stream or a stone wall so very 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 helpful mm -hmm. it's funny after our meeting uh, I think it was last month or two months ago mm -hmm. Um, I was working on a deed at my desk, and I thought, gosh, I wish the select board was here. I was tearing my hair out on this, on this deed. But, uh, so it'll be quite helpful. If, 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 this, if this goes through the budget, when will it be uh, upgraded? Not till next year. Till next year, okay. Yeah, just a question with regards to you know, our shared services. How many, how many hours, I guess, um, would be the way to ask it, a week is Rockport getting? I mean... Um, <clears throat> How do you split that up? I mean, is it 20 hours for them, 20 hours for us? Or? I work in Rockport every Monday and Tuesday, and Camden every Wednesday and Thursday, and Fridays, it's how I'm needed. So I guess give me a breakdown of, your, of a salaried person's 40-hour week. How does that work? What do you mean? Well, how many hours do you work a week, and who gets what? I just what? told you. Monday and Tuesday in Rockport, Wednesday and Thursday in Camden, and Friday where I'm needed. So if they're 10-hour days, that would be 25 and a half hours a week. For Rockport, is that a fair assumption? <clears throat> that that would be my. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm just asking Carrie what right. he works. I'm not asking. I'm trying to figure out what Rockport. Do we see a full 40-hour week for Rockport? No. Or is there no, no need for a 40-hour no. week? No, we don't see a full 40-hour mm -hmm. week. You see a combination. So do we need a 40-hour week person? We're not. Sh we're not lacking in any services. We're. That wasn't the question. I just said is. Are we and I'm answering the question. 40-hour-a-week person. 
we, we, when, I, when I last figured this out, which was a while ago, you remember we had a, uh, a select board that was, that was cutting and slashing a number of years ago. And I, was, they, I was suspect of that, too. I mean, I was part of that, so. You were part of the select board? No, part of the slashing. So. <laughs> yeah, okay. You, you don't have to give me an education <laughs> on that. I'm, I'm not trying to. What, I, what I'm saying is that Judy Matthew was the assessor then, and I was her assistant. They cut my job. And it's more than a one-person job, and Judy just up and left. Mm. We lost a very good, uh, it, was, it created an opportunity for me, but we lost a good assessor. Well, I, I came in, and after about a year, maybe it took longer than a year, I convinced the select board that it was more than a one-person job. No. I, so, what? No, I was just going to say, when I, when I see you working weekends and holidays and I suspect nights, then that tells me that you've got a lot of work to do that can't be done in a normal week. But he's, well, he's getting the work done. I know, but you shouldn't have to. I don't want to see burnout is what mm -hmm. I'm saying. That's where I'm going with this. So, I, I, nothing Mark, personal. I, I, I appreciate that. <laughs> but I come in on a Saturday morning because I can get more work done in four hours on a Saturday morning than I can get in a couple of weekdays during the, during the week. <coughs> but you shouldn't have to. That's the whole. But I like to. It makes my job go better. It's, 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 it's me. It's nice. I'm not being forced to do it. I, I do it because I, I like what I do and, and it occupies me. And if I'm thinking about a particular problem I was working through on Friday, there's nothing better than to come in on Saturday and get it figured out. That's just how I do it. So you work 10 hour days, is that what it is typically? Typically? Typically, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> well, as we've talked about in previous years, that this arrangement <coughs> allows us to, to use Carrie's expertise um, at a higher level and then, and then to fill in the other work that's needed with a, a lower level professional, which saves the town money. Uh, that's the way I've always viewed it. Um, well, I asked this question last year, and, and Rick's a proponent of training. Mm -hmm. Why don't we train Carrie's assistant that we have here so that they're capable of doing it, pay them a little more, and not have to pay our neighboring town? Well, I'll let we, you guys address that. We are training her. I mean, she's going to training with you now. I mean, it's a very... It's well, I'm a, not talking about Caitlin. I'm talking about yeah, her. Yeah. Okay. Right. Hannah, Hannah is going. Yeah, she's she's budgeted. She went to property tax school last year. She went to the uh, assessor's fall conference last year. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we, she's doing the same this year. And we have. So you have a plan to get her at the same level so that we can use her instead of. I don't know. I, w I wouldn't say instead of. You know, I, maybe, I don't know. Maybe, Carrie, you could explain the difference between what Hannah does and what Caitlin does. Yeah, that sure, might be yeah, helpful. Sure, that's yeah. where I'm trying to get. Can we get Hannah? Where Caitlin well, let's is. hear what, what Carrie has to say about the, the difference in what they do, I think, would be important. With, Answer with, that with, question. With ha Hannah, at present, is extre extremely capable. She's a bright young lady, and she does all kinds of clerking tasks. She she's <clears throat> handles everything from secretarial, which there isn't much of. I do most of, uh, mo most of that kind of work myself. Um, but she does all of the all of the day to day. She, she, she answers the phone. She's the first person to talk to people. If she can't solve whatever they're looking for, then they come to me. If Caitlin's around, then they go to Caitlin, uh, and then comes to me. Um, and so she handles a lot of the day-to-day -day processing of things, filing of things, uh, dealing with people, talking with them. Caitlin, though, is an assessor, and, and, and you know, as the years have gone, gone by, I think she's now three years into being an assessor. Uh, she's bright and personable, and I can have her do things I can't have Hannah do. Um, just from a legal standpoint and from an experience standpoint. Uh, you know, if uh, I'm, I'm really not thinking three years into the future, I, I asked Hannah um, to, to learn more about assessing and she's willing to. And where that leads us, you know, we'll find out as time goes. Um, so, you know, I, I, I <coughs> Mark, not to evade your question, but I don't think I really have an answer to it other than saying the more capable they are, the better. Can you, can you talk about the, t the, the type of work you're doing here and the type of work you're doing in Camden, the difference between? Sure, sure. Well, in, in, in Rockport, the day-to-day -day assessing is divided up. It's mostly Hannah and Caitlin, but I do some. Uh, I did a whole bunch today. But mostly, uh, but mostly it's handled by Hannah and Caitlin, and I handle all the big projects. Um, and, and big projects is everything from making sure that our assessment levels are correct 
uh, dealing with difficult people, uh, responding to abatements, handling projects, um, on and on and on. In Camden, that's all I do. Caitlin does all the day to day. I don't do any day to day work in Camden. I only I only work on the projects. Um, we just had a reval finish in Camden, and as a result of the re uh, the reval, we had quite a few abatement requests, and I have three more to respond to. <laughs> I've got that done, and it's time to do inspections. So it's working out just perfect. But that that's probably the major difference. Is Caitlin mm -hmm. does all the day to day in Camden, and I don't do any in Rockport. I do some. Um, Rick, for those of us that weren't around, <clears throat> um, this is in the past, why the meteoric rise in the salary going back 14, 15, 15, 16, 16, 17? What was going on there? That's when the agreement took place. That's when the agreement took place, when he took over two, t two towns. Yeah. And so that was what the, the, the two boards decided on for for uh, salary in 16-17. Um, 15-16. It was a higher level of responsibility mm -hmm. at the time, and of course, we only, as, as Rockport, we only pay half of that. No, so, I understand uh, that, but mm -hmm. you know, that's you know 50% bump in salary over four years, just you know, trying to get my hands around that. I mean that that's that was the reason because his his responsibilities and his job changed and <clears throat> he went up he was now doing two towns and as you heard I mean Kerry does well, but he's doing two towns part time I mean right. it's not like he's doing two but, eight you know two forty hours yeah I mean you know one of the concerns about him working too much he also I mean he gets paid pretty well you know I think he, he's the highest paid you know, yep. person in town yep. But he, you know, when when it's when it's busy, when you know doing when he's doing reval and doing inspections and doing all of that stuff, he's he may be working 55, 60 hours a week. You know, there's times there's times where his workload is really extreme. Last last year, Rick had mentioned earlier about the the two major bits of new valuation that I brought in. That was that was worth $113,586. In revenues to the town of Rockford, I think I think you're getting your money's worth. How how, how could that not be so? Well, I, I think last year when I asked the three million dollar question of revenues that might be brought in, mm -hmm. we talked about that, mm -hmm. and you just said a minute ago we didn't see hardly any of that. That number that you gave us. I'm I'm not sure I'm following you. It was a three million dollar figure that you gave us last year with the budget committee. This year you just said it was six or seven million. I think oh, of new, yeah. Of new taxable. Right. The three million dollar. But we didn't see hardly any of that last year, right? So I'm wondering, are we going to be okay this year? It depends. I mean, you know, we can't we can't chase the same dollars. Well, well of that hundred and thirteen thousand, we'll probably we'll probably bring in something. Some of that's going to depreciate, but it'll be about. Something over a hundred thousand will come in this coming year, and then next year it'll depreciate a little bit more. But it's going to be the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah, and I'm not being critical, Kerry. I'm just trying to understand this because again, it's new to me and everything. But you know, so I understand this money came in sort of last year. But you know, who was not on the ball the couple of years before that this was not being so picked not on up? The ball. I was busy doing day to day assessment. Right. I didn't have yeah. time. That's that's what. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's the distinction we're trying to make. Is by mm -hmm. having the time to do the high-level assessing, I'm able to do things like that. I'm also able to keep us out of court, um, you know, be, and not because I'm settling with people, because the assessments are solid. I, I'll 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 uh, venture, Doug, that when we renegotiate the legal contract, that they don't bring up how much they've been right. on the phone with me as one of the reasons they're raising their rates. Because mm -hmm. it's it's rare. Who's they? The the, 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 the lawyers, lawyers. town sure. council. Okay. Well, I guess that's my last comment on that. Would be that. Wouldn't we see the same thing if we had you here 40 hours a week and didn't share you? No, you had no. me here 40 hours a week and mm -hmm. it wasn't happening. Yeah. <laughs> well, now we have you less and 
But we have somebody else as well. As right. so we're paying. We're paying. That I, I understand. I think else. part of the. I think part of the, the problem here is that um, what we have is a line that shows your salary, and we have over here a line that shows Camden reimbursement. What we don't have is any way of knowing what part of the sixty-nine thousand four dollars is your salary. So that sixty-nine thousand is salary benefits. It's um, I, I don't know all what's in it. So there's, there's everything, everything in gray on this sheet is in it. Right. Everything so, in gray is is reimbursed by by Camden. Right. Well. Okay. Part, if, you know, but, the 69, but the sixty nine but the sixty nine thousand yeah. dollars reimburses yeah. everything that's great. That's right. It does not re, it does not tell me what part of the sixty nine thousand dollars is being reimbursed. In other words, is Camden paying half of the ninety four thousand? Fifty percent. I think Megan they're paying fifty percent. Megan can give us an answer. Because I think that's not what that's what's not being understood here is okay. that while we are sharing with you, we are also sharing the cost of you. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, Megan, and that's, you wanna, that does not appear right. to be. Right. Nobody notices that when they look down and say, right. "You used to make sixty-one, now you make ninety-four. But in fact, you used to make sixty-one from Rockport. Right. Now you make forty-six from Rockport, forty-seven right. from right. Rockport." Right. <laughs> and, and also, just emphasizing that they were the great, like lodging is on the great <coughs> thing. Camden pays half of my lodging expenses. They pay half of my training and education, mm -hmm. half of my dues and membership, because it benefits both towns. Right. And we would be paying all of that. We used to pay all of that. So let, let's that. let Megan have a shot at maybe she can help explain this. So in fiscal year 14, 15, total wages and benefits, including his assistant here, was 107476 Wages and benefits, including Caitlin, at 50% is 83422 so that gives the towns a net savings of this fiscal year over 1415 of $24,053.50. Right. So I'm not sure where Mark's and Doug's complaints are coming from. It's not a complaint. Perception. Okay. Sorry, you're right. It wasn't a complaint. And how many hours a week does Caitlin work? She probably does 40. I've never counted. She does 40. I mean, she's minimum for, 40. For Rockport. Yeah. Oh, for Rockport? Yeah. Uh, eight hours a week? We don't, do, we don't do it on a weekly basis. So, for example, we're, we're right now, we're, uh, well, once the snow goes, <laughs> we'll start inspections. And we, Kevin and I might do three days, four days in a row in Rockport, and the same thing in Camden. Um, we keep track of Caitlin's, Caitlin's time on an annual basis. I, she doesn't come to us one day a week. Uh, there might be a number of weeks where she's not here at all but it comes out to 20% of her time. I mean, again, I'm just trying to get a handle on making sure that the town is getting our value. And, you know, Megan mm -hmm. says, yeah, you know, $20,000, that's the value. But you know, that I guess there was a time when you were working 40 hours a week. It was never a time it, I worked 40 It was hours. never. I, mean, well, you know, about I know about, I, I know about right? working yeah. long hours. Phrase so, of work, working um, slowly for Rockport. Full time, yeah, you know, so a full time work week, correct? Yeah. And now you work twenty five ish, twenty five or so a week, and then Caitlin works maybe eight hours a week. So before we had forty man hours, forty to fifty man hours. A week and now we actually have less than that. 30. We also have Hannah uh, there. Now, can I ask you a question? Are you getting complaints about the assessing services? No, I'm trying okay. to understand how I we're spending wanna, taxpayer dollars. Yeah, that's yeah, that's we probably another, send them through Rick. Yeah. There's another advantage yeah. that that is um, um, less solid, but that's knowing both towns is extremely helpful. To give you an example, when we did the reval, we lost $61 million on the waterfront. And leading up, that reval was 2015. Leading up to the reval, for years I was getting complaints from people on the waterfront that their values were too high. But we had no sales, absolutely zero. 
So I, and I kept saying, I can't react. I, I have no sales to base anything on. And, you know, the complaints were pretty off, pretty loud, pretty often. It took a lot of work to respond to them. Had I been working in Camden as well, had I had that knowledge, I would have seen that Rockport's waterfront values were higher than Camden's. And the dynamic between the two towns, uh, impossible to be, uh, for me to be aware of until I had that. Now, had I been working both towns at the same time, when those complaints came in, they would have resonated with me more. I don't know what I could have done without sales, but I would have tried to deal with them, and we wouldn't have dropped $61 million all in one year. Um, so, and it, and it benefits, it benefits my Rockport experience benefits Camden, and my Camden experience benefits Rockport. I know more about the real estate market and, and the values and what, what pushes them uh, by seeing the, the two different towns, uh, you know, up close and personal. Do you have anything else? Um, I want to ask a question about the uh, the computer software licenses, the number that got dropped by 10,000, which is always mm -hmm. nice. What's the uh, the lifespan of that before we have to re-up again? This is an upgrade for... Uh, right. the, last, the last major upgrade was 6.5, which is what we're using right now. <coughs> and that was... <coughs> 10, maybe, maybe 11 years ago, somewhere in there. So it's not unreasonable to assume that this will last oh, sure. at least a handful Absolutely. of years. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and if I could just say, just to pat myself on the back, <laughs> uh, the upgrade is $20,000. And Vision asked me to be part of their client advisory team. I'm one of two main assessors who, who's working with them and 10 assessors total. And, um, and we put in a lot of work. It was good. It was, it was interesting to see how software was developed. We got some things in there that, that I've always wanted um, in the software, and we're still working on it and developing it. But it did take a bit of my time, and it did cause some Saturdays. Um, but it took a lot, a lot of effort, and at some point, I called the CEO of Vision, and I said, you know, when you originally proposed this, I thought $5,000 was a fair deal, but it's not. I said, you got to do better, because this has taken a lot of my time. And so they took another $10,000 off. And one of the things that annoys me, uh, um, being having used to work in the private sector, now in, now in the public sector, was I, I, and I'm not saying this about my fellow staff, because I don't think it's true for the most part, but I get annoyed when people don't spend town money like it's their own money, like it was a private enterprise. And, and, I, and I think that most people would have just let that, thank you for the $5,000 and go. Mm -hmm. And so I'm always trying to squeeze value out of whatever situation it is and thinking of the money in a very personal way. Mm -hmm. okay. Any other questions on assessing? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie. Thanks, Carrie, for coming in. Between things, could we perhaps, despite the high price of oil, do something with the thermostat? I know I have some oh, sleeves on, but she's <laughs> got long sleeves on, and she's a little chilly. Oh, um, uh, does anybody, I don't know, it's over there. Know. You want to bump it up a little bit? I don't know if it went off automatically like it does then. Or? I don't know. I, I never look at it. So. Yeah, I don't either. Uh, Thank you, Kerry. The town clerk is next, page 95. Madam Grandmother. Linda, come on up. Yes. Oh, how do I get back? I see hot for you. Uh, Thank you all. <laughs> Thank you for being here, Kerry. I, I know, the, I get the I know there's probably to... a page in here somewhere. How do I get Somebody could refresh my memory, but who are the towns that we oh. use to compare to get wages from? It's in the front. It's is it in the front? Yeah. So. Uh, I didn't see the Camden, Ellsworth, St. George. Waldeboro, West Cassett, Booth Bay, Booth Bay Harbor. Yeah. And those and those numbers were obtained this fall. Uh, yeah, just as this budget process started. Yeah, that's kind of my impression. 
And those are the same same towns we've been using for several years. For, for four or five years. Towns are just pulled out. <laughs> and a lot of them were picked because they were about the same size as Rockport, and because they had a lot of them have a harbor too, which waterfront have, makes it, <coughs> makes it a valuation a waterfront. Do you look at just the budget, or do you look at other benefits that? You look at just the salary, I should say, or just or the other benefits that people might be getting as well. We just looked at the uh, typically the just, set, salary. just the salary. So the big the big thing with uh, the town clerk is always when you get down to revenues because that's where all our money comes in comes in through the town clerk's office. Um, there's not much in the way of changes in the town clerk's uh, budget, as it's been for many years. Um, one, uh, there was a reduction in uh, reduced election costs, and I, um, we talked about that again today to make sure I reduced election costs by thousand dollars to make sure that we don't have you know we don't have a presidential election, but. Isn't it gubernatorial? Yeah, yeah. Yes. In, to make sure that that my mm -hmm. reduction because of the rank choice voting, it wasn't going to mess us up. And Linda felt that that was okay, but you know, the, we don't know what the rank choice voting is going to cost us. Um, you know that that one's kind of a crapshoot, but. But I don't think it's the ranked choice that's going to cost us. The biggest fees in the election is for the ballots mm -hmm. and the programming. Yep. But, so you know, getting another machine, and if we had to get another machine, we're, we're okay. You're, you're, you're okay? But will so the ranked choice have to be counted by hand, or will they have to be? That will no, no, be counted no, no, no. by machine. Okay. And then the other four ballots will have to go into the other machine. Mm. You could never do it by hand, accurately. We can't be trained that way. So if this turns out to be low, will you just do what you got to do? Yeah, we'll have to do what we have. Yeah, we'll be overspent. Close the poll at 7. Yes. <laughs> um, that when you go down, uh, the uh, computer repair and maintenance is five computers in that office. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, right now we're at $1,090, but what was the reason that we thought we were going to be okay with the $1,000 instead of upping that? Because Shay and Brenda are getting new computers. Oh, that's right, because that's right. Shay and Brenda are on the schedule for uh, two new, there's two new computers going in that office, so our hope is that with the two new computers, we won't have as much maintenance going on. Uh, and as Linda pointed out that the re one of the things that she felt that the reason that it was high this year was because of the move last year. The prior year. The prior year. <coughs> uh, you know, the 1930 was the, the year we had $1,930 in 2016-17 is when we had, the, had to move them out back um, to do the vestibule and the renovation and the painting and everything in the uh, tax collector's uh, town clerk's office. Uh, so they were out for a month, correct? Was it a month? Over. A little About over a month. Six or seven weeks. Yeah. So, um, so that money for the move, for the rerouting all the computers and doing all that work went there. Um, so that's why that, that is higher. Um, and uh, apparently we've had a lot of problems with those two computers that, that so Gus has been in a bunch of times. Um, so what do you do with the old ones again, regardless of where they come from? Which department? What do you do with them? They're cycled out typically. They, I mean, they, what do you do? I they mean, get when destroyed. you say cycled out. They what? get destroyed. Um, there's the, I don't, I'm not sure if we're taking them over to the computer recycling thing. That they the, either get destroyed or they go to an apartment, a department that doesn't require such a heavy operating system like the girls out front myself we're mm -hmm. all very trio based which mm -hmm. requires a lot of power mm -hmm. um shay's been having a lot of issues with her computer with trio just shutting down and that's because it doesn't have the power to support the program do we anymore. have such a department that would require or need one of those um we've given one to the opera house before um one's gone to public works mm -hmm. I guess that's where I'm going. Is yeah. if, if 
if there's somebody that doesn't need that high volume yeah. whatever and we're getting I, ready to buy a new one and you're getting ready to cycle one out can we mm. I'm I'm sub, my, I'm supposed to get a new a new computer this year next year but the reality is I I don't do the heavy lifting of computing power um, so I think Megan is going to get my machine because she does heavy lifting and I'll get her her machine um, and mine, 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 which is seven years old or eight years old. Yeah. Because it's Stacy's old one. Didn't yeah. you just get one you, last year? Mine's three years old. Yeah. Probably two or three we'll, we'll years old. We'll get you an etch a sketch, Rick. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the reality is, you know, I'm not doing the heavy computing. You know, I don't, I mean, I use mine for word processing, maybe some spreadsheet stuff. Uh, I, I do some spreadsheet work and email, and I, I'm not doing the heavy computing. It's it's Linda's office and Megan's office that's doing the heavy lifting. Um, so they're, you know, actually, uh, Megan just pointed out the computer that I have now, which was cycled out. That was Stacy's old computer about five or six years ago, and that she had had that for a bunch of years. And it works fine for me. Um, I... It, just in the past couple weeks, it started to act up. It's like it knows it's going out to pasture. <laughs> but, um, you know, it, it works fine to, for me, and I, and I always have a, the backup of my laptop. Um, but, you know, it's not me. It's, you know, there's other people in the department. Kerry also is another one that he's doing the heavy lifting stuff. I'm not, I don't need that. So okay. even though it, my schedule, it says that I'm scheduled to get one, uh, that I'll get a handy hand me down and I'm okay with that. Rick, is it possible for you to work just with a laptop? Uh, and maybe a second monitor just to make it easier on your old eyes? I mean, that, that that could be possible if I get stuck. There's, you know, the laptops are, they have a much shorter lifespan. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm used to working on a laptop, uh, uh, but uh, I, frankly, if the laptop were plugged in and I had the screens that I was looking at, I would not know the difference. Exactly. Yeah, yeah I, I really probably wouldn't know yeah. the difference. I just wonder if you need both systems. Mm. But I'll, I, I'm, I'm good with a, a recycled one. A okay. uh, yes. So last year when we were talking amongst ourselves, we decided to give you a cell phone budget. And we asked you to keep track of it to see if it was enough, not enough, too much. How much do you think? You're using your cell phone more than you thought you were, or don't put or words in your mouth. I'm using it more because I upgraded my phone, and we're so all happy. <laughs> we're, and so we're all smartphone. happy. <laughs> oh, I'm over the moon about that. <laughs> Me too. So now I, I can text. I can text her. She can. So, do you think your stipend is where it should be, or would you? I don't know what the stipend is now. Is it's 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 a that comes up. It's twenty-five a month. You can get vote. somebody else. I can't vote. I can ask questions. So, yeah. Okay. So, um, not a whole lot of changes in the budget. Further down, uh, there's the two. Two. Um, I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, Thirty-nine twenty training. All of a sudden. I don't remember what happened last year. I barely remember what happened yesterday. Why we went from the $300 range to the $1,200 range and are now keeping that. What, what happened last year that we uh, upped the budget for training? We didn't up it. That's what we had, but that's all we used. And there's training coming up in April, record management, mm -hmm. vitals, tax liens. Okay. May there's licensing and in June there's so uh, municipal are we law. are we more likely to use the budget this year? Yes. Okay. I would like to see that. It, one of the one of the challenges is that most a lot of the training that Linda avails herself of, and the, and the other women in the the office is it's free. It's offered uh, offered free. Um, you know, I you are planning on going to. Training up at Sunday River this summer. Is it summer? Yeah, the election conference right. will be in May. Right. So the three of us will be going. Tra the training budget is not one I want to see cut. You know, I would like to. You know, I'm big on making sure people get the training they need, um, and you know, like we've discussed, 
Uh, Linda's also gotten certified with along with Diane on GA. So that that's been two days of training, which I'm really happy about. Thank you, Linda. You're welcome. Um, uh, so there's been, but you know, some of the training is, you know, a lot of that training is free and provided by the state. <coughs> well, I will. Uh, Under line five zero zero five supplies. <clears throat> Can you explain that seventeen dollars to me? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well. People thought I was giving Carrie a hard time, so I just want to. You know, <laughs> <laughs> can you explain that? I can. Okay. Um, elections. Yeah. Stevie can attest to. <laughs> Jan can. Peanut butter balls. Absolutely. I make a lot of things for elections <laughs> for my workers. So a lot come. of that is donated by me, but some things I buy. Okay. Yeah. So in June, I will spend more money for the, on you that. For You're you welcome. You, at least <laughs> you, you haven't been victim the of the peanut butter balls. <laughs> There. Exactly. The date could be yeah. the I mean, <laughs> Rick, honestly, <laughs> just for her baking job. Oh, like yeah. <laughs> Peanut butter balls. Um, well, I'll make my annual pitch on the revenue number for excise tax. Yeah. Um, I have new tricks. I do. I mean, I, looking at what, um, at the excise tax tables we have on page 101. We have some new charts. Last year we took in 831,000. Um, at the halfway point last year, we had 417,000. Um, at the halfway point this year, we had 422,000. So it seems to me that we're on track uh, to uh, be uh, in the same neighborhood for this year as we were last year, unless something really weird happens in the next few months. And I think the latest numbers bear that out. Because I'm just looking on now for the first time, we had a low month in well, March, is only part way done. So. Um, and so, you know, when we come to the select board budget, I'll be advocating for increasing that number to at least 800,000. Um, we have always in the past tried to be reasonably conservative with that number. We don't, wanna, we don't wanna put too big a number in there and then not meet it because it does have implications for the budget. But on the other hand, we wanna be fairly realistic. Um, so um, if, if we take the, uh, uh, the 417,000, which is the first half of, of 16, 17, multiply that by two, you get 834,000. We came in at 831,000 last year, so it's a, it's a reasonably good predictor. So if we take the 422, which is the halfway number for 17, 18, and double it, that would be 844. Now, I'm not willing to put 844 in the budget, but I think probably 800,000 is not unreasonable. I, I would invite Linda to, to say I, yay or nay on that one. I think Rick and I'm kind of the same. We're conservative, and we did up it a little bit. Um, I think maybe 775. I think I would go <laughs> along with yours, Ken, in Mara. Last year's eight. I'd even bump it up to 825 ish. Ooh. Goes your UFD. Ooh. Um, well, yeah, we, I, we don't I, use I, it anyway. That's so. why I say, I mean, I, I don't want to, I don't want to. Play it too I'm close just, but to I, the rest I, of whatever. But, I agree with um, your thinking of bumping it up. Last year, I didn't suggest bumping it up at all based on what the numbers were. And, but the year before, I suggested bumping it up a fair amount, and, and it worked out okay. So, um, But anyway, we, we'll be able to discuss that, but I just want to let everybody know that I think that the number that we have in the budget is too low um, by a fair amount. Um, and so that's, that's an increase of 45000 over the budget, and that, that can help cover a lot of the other stuff that we've talked about on the expense side. Yeah, the, the, the revenues are always a topic of conversation, particularly excise tax. When you, get, when you get down to where the rubber meets the road at the end of the budget process and you're trying to make numbers work, that's where <laughs> then that's where all the horse trading is. I mean, if it gets down to the end and we're 5,000 off, then I'm okay pushing 5,000 more in there. But if we haven't pushed it to the limit in the prior discussions, that's, that's why, like I say, the 800,000 number I, I feel is closer to what we're going to get. I think it's probably still low, but I wouldn't be willing. You don't want to predict that one too close to the vest because if you, if you do have a bad month or something yeah. like that or something unforeseen happens, but... Um, seems like we've been on a pretty good trajectory over the past several years, so. 
Well, I'm doing my best. But paying their cars. I already have. Back <laughs> <on> there, so. <laughs> Done my part, too. <laughs> Anything else on the town clerk budget? Okay. GA. Uh, general assistance, page 137. This way. Mm -hmm. This way. Here's where we Towards can make me. the real cut. Uh, yeah. We have our Be nice. This is Diane's first new general assistance <laughs> administrator. It's her first budget ever, and our deputy GA administ administrator back here also has who, run away. Who are doing it? Both of them are doing a great job. Thank you. And I'll put in a plug for them because many of you, I mean, maybe you know or you don't know, but one. When Stacy left, she had been a GA administrator for a long time. She knew the, the business inside and out. And we originally had hoped that Camden could help us with that for a short term. And, and they kind of decided, uh, with fairly short notice, I think, mm. uh, that they couldn't handle it anymore. So these two ladies really were, were thrown into the deep end of the pool very quickly. And, and I was in the office when they were still floundering in the deep end one day, and it wasn't pretty. Uh, <laughs> but they have... Uh, They've really, in my opinion, from what I've seen, really uh, worked very hard to get up to speed on this topic. So, so one thing, as Megan just pointed out to me, the year-to-date um, isn't really up-to-date here because it was, uh, with some of the stuff is because it was, hasn't gotten entered in yet because it was through when Stacy was doing it and we, we made the switch over. So some of the year-to-date numbers aren't. Exactly. Well, the 851 represents Stacy's time while she was here, and then the agreement with Linda and Diane didn't start until January. Right. So, so there's been some, you know, some stuff that's some things that are different. Um, uh, but as with many of the budgets, when you look at the gray section, you, that signifies something's happening here, and so the gray section is the section that is reimbursed by the state. It's reimbursed at a level of, is it 50%? 70%. So that's, that shows up in the revenue line down at the bottom under uh, 0552. So the, the, whatever we budget there, that, that total there shows up in that revenue line. And as, we, as you all know, I think, is that we really have no control over this. Whatever the number is, is the number. And um, they spend what they have to spend, and <laughs> we, we don't have an option here. Okay. I just want to make sure that you're comfortable with what you're, what you're getting. Yes. Okay. And that brings to mind a question. How is that determined? I mean, there are fluctuating numbers if you go back to 14, 15, up through you know, even this year, 17, 18. I know 17, 18 was explained, but how do you go from 6,000 to 500 less to 700 more? How does that, how do you figure that one out? Which line are you looking at, Mark? The stipend for the, the stipend? position. So what does that How's do? that figured out? Uh, the prior GA administrator had a lot of unpaid time in 15-16 due to illness and family issues, so that's why that number decreased that year. Okay, and but that and she had been doing it for a how, long time. Is, how is it based? Is it on an, what they make an hour? Or by how many hours they spend a year? It's just a stipend. It's, it, a, fixed it's, amount, just, it's a fixed stipend. So how come, it, I mean, I take it we're not seeing any fewer clients. So why is it that much less? Just the because we wanted to nip and tuck, so we could meet LD one. Do it my job. I, I know, but I'm just I'm wondering. We're if not you want to put more money in there, go. I'm just saying, you know, we're not. It's a fixed stipend. It's right. not based on hours. It's not based on client hours that come see us. Based on experience, though, I right. think I think and that that's a fair thing to say. Is that the previous GA administrator yeah, was is. one of the best in the state and had been doing it for a very very uh, long that's time. criticism. So now we've got two for the price of one. Though we have somebody that helped the previous one plus. Mm -hmm. A new person, so right. Just trying to figure these quite a drastic decrease there. Yeah. So, I mean, any other questions here? I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty much all cut and dry. Um, it, it, the numbers are the numbers. We've seen a big uptick in cases. Um, sometimes I think that it, that is as soon as you have a new GA administrator, the you know, the word gets out and people feel like they, they come in and test the waters. And we, 
And this was supposed to have been backdated too to like January and February to be paid. Yes. Yep. And that 851 indicates that. No, it's no. a December 31st number. Right. All right. But that January and February has been stipended out. Yes. Yes. Uh, yep. Um, and as I recall, the uh, we get donations for general assistance from people from time to time through the year. People routinely give some money for general assistance, and that's kind of off budget if I understand it, and that gives the GA administrator a little bit of flexibility, I think. So those numbers don't show up. A lot of times it's used for things that are, people are just outside of the yep. parameters of qualifying for state considered general assistance, so we have those. And so it means that, you know, in some, it's up to the GA administrators to, to decide, you know, a little bit of money may help and may, you know, a little bit of money put in in the right place may produce a result that's that's good and and keeps that person out of coming back for more general assistance. How and much money do we have in that kitty now? Um, twenty five hundred dollars probably. That's just from this year, or is that in no, total? That's carry over. It carries over. All right. But we did get so a two thousand yeah, donation. Yeah, I'm we back did. with Mark. I just because I keep so attuned with social service issues in our communities, uh, I, I just don't understand. And, and I think somebody just said that there, Rick, I think you said there will be, there has been an uptick in the number of cases. And I, I just don't, I'm not comfortable with a reduction for the stipend. Uh, when I first looked at yours, it was, I can't read it with my glass. Anyway, it just seems like it's like a, what, a 25% total, even having Linda, a reduction in the stipend for the, for the GA people? And their work certainly isn't going to get any less. I, I, well, <laughs> yeah, I guess, it, anyway, I don't see that it's going to get any less. So I, I'm, I'm just not comfortable with that because of, you know, I, I, I work with Stacy so much in terms of knowing mm -hmm. what was involved. And it's not you, typically, an easy type of thing. And I, I just, I feel, I, I, don't, I don't like that cut. Typically, when we when we hire somebody new in the job, right? With, I mean, they don't come in typically at the same level of the right. person that I had been that. there for eighteen or nineteen years doing that work. Um, so they come in at at a lower rate. And in in my what I typically try to do is give incentives for employees to get more training, get sort of certified like with with Diane it was um, when you get to this point you get certified you get a bump in your pay and and I can't remember exactly in your pace employment um, agreement what where the where the bumps in pay are but well the stipend went up well, after this, I got certified right once mm -hmm. you get certified which she worked really hard and got certified quickly she went up in pay um, she could have not got certified and stayed at the other bump and pay, but we encourage we encourage people to get trained and um, and uh, we encourage people to to go to the training and participate and um, and learn more things and become more valuable. And then over time, um, you know, she she will become uh, more valuable. Um, state, you know, the previous GA administrator had been doing it for many many years was, you know, um, I mean, she was, it, it's, it's just the... So we can anticipate then that this stipend would probably increase at a greater than the 3% rate over the next handful of years. It, you could, sure. Um, as, I, I know the Diane. experience isn't mm -hmm. there. I understand that. But darn it all, the workload the is there, and you, the workload you, you is even increasing. You are free to add more money in if you would like. It's an unfair world. It's a, I know it's an unfair world, Jeff. Can I ask, um, uh, our $100 advertising budget goes for, what are we advertising? I believe it's typically the uh, the rule changes. The yeah, changes we have to have a public hearing okay. every year for the to, Got it. to uh, okay. adopt the... The select board has to vote to adopt the new guidelines, which we don't have any choice, but we have to vote for it. But it's right. something that yeah, has so to be done to publicize by the books. Yeah. Okay. okay. Any other uh, questions at all here? Diane, anything? I don't okay. have anything. Thank you, Diane. <laughs> Thank you.
Page 179, the harbor. Thank you. We have Abby here, and I would note we have Sam in the audience as well. The chair of our harbor committee is here. And I will Ms. say, Miss Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, my sunglasses are not a fashion statement. I had a procedure done on my eye, so I thought it was more of a fashion statement than the eye patch I'm supposed to wear. Yeah. So just get that out there. <laughs> yeah, we know Abby. <laughs> we wear the water master. all the time. <laughs> right. So Pirates. I can just, I can, I'm cool enough where I can just wear them inside <laughs> at night. Can you see anything with not them? Not much. <laughs> <laughs> not a whole lot. It feels like someone threw sand in my face. So uh, as with some of the other budgets, uh, one thing with this budget, if you go all the way down to the revenue section, you'll see there's $141,500 in revenue to offset a total budget of $179,340, which brings the actual cost of the taxpayer to $37,840. So, uh, a lot of this, a lot of this budget is is offset by uh, revenues for moorings and dockage and all kinds of things. That when we get down to the revenues, um, uh, but uh, you, you'll see a, a one of the first things when you go down through the uh, personnel services, the deputy harbor master, her hours were increased, I, I believe, slightly, but the uh, park attendant hours, if you look down to 22220, uh, that, that total has been decreased by 54%. Uh, so uh, Abby was just thinking that she could do a better job with uh, having the uh, deputy harbor master around more and um, have less uh, money budgeted for park attendants to, to be there. So that, uh, that was a, that's a big change there, uh, which brings the salary down by 6%. 6.1%, uh, the salary line down by 6.1%. Um, so, um, and then when you go down through the budget, uh, you know, the, there's a, the first thing you get to is electricity. That's based on, based, based on what Megan's expected uh, need is for, for that budget. Um, again, the sewer usage fee, again, based on what, what our bills are coming in at. Um, the same thing with telephone. Um, uh, the uh, crane and hauling fee, you'll see the, the uh, crane, uh, 3415, crane, crane rental and hauling. The $450 number is... Uh, at the, at the mid year, does that include the, the yeah, that's, um, that's high for the half of the year um, because add that's an add a thousand. Yeah, do we have to add another thousand mm -hmm. to it. Yeah, yeah. 1450 as of now. As of now. Because of the storm that we had in October, <laughs> we had to get a crane in and get the docks out quickly and then get them, some of them put back in for the fishermen um, and uh, for other work that we had to do. So some of the docks had to come back out and then go back in again. So there was an extra haul of the docks to get that done. Um, We're working on getting some of that reimbursed through a FEMA mm -hmm. disaster recovery mm -hmm. grant. Right. Mm. So is the 600 number adequate for the next fiscal year? <laughs> For standard, you know, not it's, for any contingency. Yeah. If we just, no if that would just be putting the docks in in the fall. It's line 3415. Thanks. And yeah, taking them out Sorry. in the spring. But that's not, you know, <clears throat> contingency with ice or any other unprojected, un, you know, unforeseen circumstances. Yeah, getting the cr getting the docks out for that storm. Um, that was huge. We would, we would have seen tens of thousands of dollars <clears throat> worth of damage if we had left them in just because of the way that, that storm came in, as, as our weatherman knows, it came in pretty ferocious out of the southeast, and, and the swells were six feet in the harbor. Right, and that was the you know, Rockport Steel having a guy come in on Sunday to do the work, you know, to put in a lawn day to help us take out those. And the, har so. and the, and the highway guys. And all the highway guys, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was, yeah, then that's not just representative, not, you know, that's yeah, we, all their We left too. the docks in it to the last minute to give the um, fishermen chance 
time to deal with their boats and anybody else, and then got the docks out before they got uh, wrecked, uh, it, particularly the fishermen's dock and the, 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 the docks at the north end. Uh, was that B and, uh, C and D, C and, or D and E dock? Uh, yep, yeah, all the ones that are southerly facing yep. E, E dock. Yep. E dock. Um, and those are docks we just built, and they would have been uh, destroyed if we had left them in. Um, so we opted for getting them out, but it was such an er it was so early in the season that the fishermen and, and other people still needed some docks in because boats were still out on moorings. So we had to put them back in, uh, so that that bumped up the cost considerably. Um, well, it's money well spent. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, I I do have a question. Sorry, and it isn't that. I'm just getting caught up with your when I'm going down through it's in regards to the overtime for your assistant. Seems to me I've seen when I've done the warrants last year there was overtime for for um, Eliza. I think Wait. like I think maybe like ten hours, you know, maybe well, I'm just saying they typically pay it out of the de whatever the it's associated to the deputy harbor master. Yeah, I didn't know whether line. I needed to Well that's something you got fourteen four in there for her. Is that counting overtime, or is that just adding extra hours to her position? I think that would just, yeah, the total. And then, you know, so I would work in with that. So some week I'd use her 35 hours. If I used her 42, another, it, or something. I would manage it so that it wouldn't be overtime. Well, I don't want them to complain about not getting overtime either if they're working over 40. <laughs> oh, they, oh, they, they would. have to get paid. So, but then I would. So we don't have any plugged in, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah, I've never it's plugged not, in. It's not no either. planned overtime. And last so, last year, Eliza got overtime because the park attendant couldn't was never work. around. So oh, yeah. I mean, we only spent two thousand dollars for a park attendant, mm -hmm. which yeah. you can offset the overtime with what's not being spent in the. But park you're not. Uh, we're not. You're not putting the you, overtime in the overtime line. Right. That's, no. it that's where I guess yeah. I'm going. Yeah. Yeah. So that way we get a gauge as to how much may or may not be used on a yearly basis. So the other boat. I never anticipate using any, but we yeah. were short staffed on one hand with the park attendant, one like for two weeks. So I think. should we put some in there, Ken? I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> couple hundred bucks. I mean, you could put a placeholder place in there holder. for yeah. I mean, that would be totally prudent. I guess I'd ask Megan. Do you would you rather use that overtime line, or is it easier for you just? It's to, easier just to pay it out. To just pay it out of the. <clears throat> in other words, so the the fourteen four then includes. The expectation of some overtime. Well, I that guess. wasn't what I just heard, though. I th well, thought it was actually. Yeah, yeah that's was. that's what I was getting at. Was that I would I would manage it. Eliza doesn't is not guaranteed any overtime. So, with that, we have the understanding uh, in managing. You know, if she works 42 hours one week, she might work 38 the next. I mean, we as a board can decide. We Even want, though that we want that tracked separately. If, yeah, if, that's something if it's we do. record keeping, sure. But uh, Megan just said it was easier not to. So. I have a question. Go ahead. Um, 3305, electricity. That's the biggest expense that we have, basically, for running the place. Um, and you run out there on the harbor. Why aren't, why aren't we putting solar panels on that little, you know, somewhere out there um, to either provide for boats coming in or provide for, for you or hot water for showers? It seems like a lovely place to do it and to advertise our greenness to our uh, clientele. I like that idea. So now what do we do with it? <laughs> she likes it. I like it. I like it. the yeah. idea. Uh, and when are we do? When are we do to do the roof over? When is the oh the roof the actual uh, in three three to five years I believe because the capital we're putting in you know thirty seven fifty or hopefully putting in thirty seven fifty this year. So in right. three to five years the roof will. So the time to do solar is right after you do the roof over. It could be a separate, you know, it could be a separate installation on the on the lawn. So oh, it doesn't have to be on yeah. the yeah. roof. Would be, Just the kids would be it. devastated. Yeah. <laughs> the dogs would be devastated. Yeah. Fine. Fine. <laughs> Tough. Tough. <laughs> but um, noted. So when you get down to uh, boat repair and maintenance, mm -hmm. that's $2,500. The, one of the big ticket items for that is the Andre, there's a uh, black rubber rub rail that goes all the way around that boat. That needs to be repaired, replaced this year. I don't know what the total cost is of that. Um, um, and also, uh, yeah, so that needs to be replaced this year. So that's the big ticket item for that one. Um, Where is this? I'm sorry. What uh, boat repair? 3602. 3602. 
<clears throat> that's also general, you know, just the winterizing in general. Yep. Yeah, so are we going to give Andre a facelift in this budget, or the boat of the Andre? The, 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 the hope Andre. is that uh, Mark knows this better than anybody. Is the hope is Legacy Rockport is going to be doing? Well, they're going to. We met yesterday on oh. it, and it's it that'll be privately funded. Yeah. Good. Um, we hope. Um, Between that and the parks. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and the garden club. The garden. Like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, we've talked about how to do garden, it. Sorry. It turns out we found out that it's not made of marble. It's made of limestone. limestone yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Yeah. That was yeah. very, <laughs> very unclever. Right. That's a good idea. Oh, God. So, right on the harbor? That has some, right the harbor. some ramifications as to how we still, take care of it. We were the snug one. back then, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyway, that, that will be an off-budget situation. Can? Yes. Yeah, I did have a question. Uh, 5415, the general supplies, the explanation says... 5415. 54. 54. 54. Oh, okay, yep. Yeah. It says, yeah, flags. What do we use flags for? I mean, there's only one down there. There's one big, big flag, and that, we go through that quite a bit. Okay. And then in the summertime, um, put up a main state flag, too, but just the replacement of... The, the flags. We can't get the uh, Veterans Association 50, 4, or the Rockport Boosters to buy us a flag? Or a trunk? Is that? That was the fire, no. the fire chief told me what to put in for the flag, <laughs> <laughs> the flag budget. So I did it. The right <laughs> place, then they probably would say. Because oh, they, because they, uh, they get 50, torn. 50, 4, yeah, yeah. Oh, sure, but then that's got to be general. We got to do our flags. Oh, flag. Thank. Mm -hmm. Nice patriotic <laughs> people like us. A lot of other things come out of there, right? General supplies. But, yeah. yeah, anything that's not sort of maintenance supplies comes out of there. So, mop so the heads, 650 I mean, isn't totally all for flags. The no, 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 not at all. No, oh no. Oh, no. no. Oh. Okay, maybe that was, <laughs> maybe that was that a misunderstanding. Was I think maybe that was just. Um, can we go back to um, 3622? The float, float mooring and maintenance. I'm looking at the year-to-date number on that, and it's pretty big. Oh, the, um, the reason that was big was, as I remember, Abby, is that we had uh, some work done for the main channel markers, yeah, the moorings. Yeah, the, the big channel markers, Mark all the chain, all the anchors. All, all that all had the... to be replaced last year. Yep. And so that, that should be good for several years. This is just for the smaller channel markers that we kind of do ourselves, that Abby does when she's not breaking her finger or something. <laughs> So going, speaking of going back further to 3606, what maintenance uh, or repairs didn't we do? We haven't done the trim yet on the on the um, on, on the outside because that was you know it starts in July, and then all the yeah. exterior trim. Have we haven't gotten a, a bid to rotting. restain the building. I mean it's it's in as dire need. It's probably in worse shape than the roof is. Well, I I would think I think I've I've been told that that's the quote unquote look of the patina and the weathering of the way it's supposed to look is what I've been told by two people because I had the same thought that that's, you know, sort of, it should be re-stained, but they're actually well, cedar helps. shingles melt meant to, I mean, that, and that's, yeah. you I mean, know, that was what was said. Protect the product too, I mean. <laughs> they were, you know, they said, that, well, that's the, that's what you're looking for, the sort of patina, patina. look. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. So, I mean. <laughs> I don't know Remember nothing that I I've asked that question. Yeah. Right, no, nothing that I've you know looked yeah. at. But the 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 four thousand dollars was um, uh, twenty five hundred of it was to do the trim in um, in a composite material so that it doesn't continue to rot because it's rotting badly it's now and in need of being replaced. But that has a little patina effect. Ooh, <laughs> that's a, that's I a mean, different. That's you know. the green. It's a little different. Yeah, I, well, and I'm just <laughs> telling you what I was told about how that's supposed to weather the, the, the shingles. So that'll get done this spring. That'll get done in the spring. Okay. Yep. Um, anything else on the expense side? Anybody uh, wants yeah, to? Yeah. Quick question: How many pilings are you expecting to replace this year? I know you were doing a certain number per season. Yeah, we're hoping to do. And we're hope we, we try to do fifteen a season. Um, this and and we're we're kind of sh shifting things around, and it's why Rick. Um, suggested putting the 1200 in because uh, public works has been we've been buying them for a hundred dollars a piece mm -hmm. and then when they have when time allows That's they've right. been driving them themselves yeah. um the 6500 that we're we'll spend this Thanks. year um will be for those for to buy the the individual piles and then um to drive uh one or two for um the new for float. the new dinghy floats mm -hmm. okay 
because it's a little more expensive to drive the ones that are structural than the ones that are aesthetic. We have we currently have ten <coughs> ten pilings in stock, correct? Yep. That that need to get done, and this will allow us to buy more and get them put in. <coughs> the 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 ones that are along the bulkhead are largely decorative. Um, they they don't really serve a function any longer. I mean, at, at one point they served a function when big ships were tied up alongside and they rubbed up and down on them. Um, today they're largely functional. The ones that are uh, the the ones that are actually functional um, are the ones that we drive in that hold the docks in place. Will be the ones that we need to uh, put in for the uh, the new dinghy float, which hopefully that's going to be. It's being built now, or yeah. Well, we need to we need to put the floats back in to get yep. the dimensions of what that's going to be. But that'll be oh, this okay. spring. So, so the twelve hundred and, and uh, seventy three forty five, the twelve hundred is adequate for what we want to do. If we're if we're just if we're just looking to buy single you know oak pilings, yes. Okay. Yep, and which is which we are if in the, unless public so works. So that's they that's not an LD one cut. Then that's a that's no. a discussion. And that's we just can, a we can yeah. That's a prudent that. okay. right. Right. We okay. can. There's no sense in trying to buy more pilings and we're if not putting we the ones can put in them we've in. got. Yeah. You know, if, okay. One last question. Um, who is looking at the issue of the old stone wall on the ramp towards the highway, which seems to be more and more leaning out? It is. Um, it, that's a capital improvement so project. That, that is on the list. Okay. Mm -hmm. You mean right under the bridge there on the no no the, no 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 uh -uh. almost to the on the ramp where you launch we the come boat. down the ramp the launch ramp yeah. the the stone wall on the side that's towards the highway has been leaning more and more out into the river and the ramp okay. and I, I I mentioned that to yeah you did I ran mention Rick, uh, Mike down there last fall and he looked at it and said oh yeah um, so it's the, yeah, the it seems to have, it, it, my perception is it's moved at least another foot in, in closer into the river. Kind of so lean, it lean. It, it, it just yeah. leaning. Yeah. The, that wall in general is on the capital improvement okay. plan. Um, and, not, and not any specific point of it, just the whole sort of section okay. uh, from, from the rip, from the... From the ridge down. Ridge, yeah. Okay. And you'll see uh, the next line down, the harbor float replacement. Abby was trying to... Trying to help cut the budget down a bit and you know we the uh, harbor float reserve we had calculated out it sh we should be depositing nineteen thousand dollars a year into that budget in order to be prepared to replace those floats because we've got two hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of floats yeah I would say that at least yeah and uh, to put enough money to start putting enough money away to to maintain and re and replace them as, as needed. Um, and that's a place where I actually added $10,000 in that budget um, because I, I didn't feel comfortable trying to shortchange that because we'll end up having to pay for it later. Um, so I and put $10,000 back in there. And my hope was just that we could, you know, stretch that manufacturer year longevity out of the, the floats and, you know, by doing... Mm -hmm. Maintenance, but, yearly maintenance on them, but I mean, but, but we that already, is what the we did that to get to the nineteen thousand right. number. <laughs> we stretched out the the years, uh, as I remember, right, Megan? Yeah. 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 I'd be comfortable. With yeah, we we added extra years to get the number down under twenty thousand because originally it was in the it was quite a bit more than twenty thousand yes. dollars, and so we, our, you know said we we will have to make the we'll have to make the floats last longer and we did and you know but if we if we go any further we'll have be, be looking to try and make them last even longer than we should so that was uh, my my attempt to just say we need to pay attention to that the capital uh, the harbor float reserve because that is a substantial uh, cost um, anything else on the expense side Uh, on the revenue side, um, I have a question about 0806 merchandise sales. Um, I know this, this is hard because these the season is split between two fiscal years right. sort of thing. So 
Do we anticipate we're going to meet the 6,000? We're going to sell enough stuff before the, the 1st of July? I'm thinking we need to, you know, sort of revamp our T-shirt styles. I think everybody's <laughs> sort of I've saturated about, of the yeah. same I've style. I've got about five maybe. of the same thing. Um, so. so, you know, I, I don't know if that's reflective of that. We did have a very slow July this year. I mean, inordinately slow. We had probably the best August I've ever seen, but July was... You know, June and July, I should say, it didn't even start to get going until <laughs> really August and September. So um, the answer is I think we'll probably be a little low on that, but I am confident to leave the 6,000 that we can, you know, up our game a little bit. Okay. And the winter boat storage number, uh, 0819. Um, are, are those revenues all in for the year? Are they all No, paid? we're waiting on um, Dallas Fields, who's a who has a majority of the has not paid yet, so okay. um, he needs to get you know we, we need to get that. So he, there's a that's a that's a fairly big chunk that might that will put us over the might even a little bit over the <coughs> over the seventy five hundred. Yeah. And then I guess the question for Rick is why the reduction from seventy five hundred to six thousand? Because we we're actually we have fewer boats going in there. Correct. We've seen fewer and fewer boats going in. We ha um we have and we're we're looking to sort of. I don't know why. Yeah, I'm not sure why that's in there, but Do you remember that would be you. I think it was just based on what had been collected so mm -hmm. So is it unreasonable yeah, oh, that, yeah. that, could, that could sit at the right. 7,500? Actually, if I, I didn't know that, that we had that extra money coming in. So that, oh, you probably that, looked at what's collected. Yeah. yeah, so you could probably go back. You should go back up <laughs> to that revenue. And then my other question is Marine Park rental fees 0823. Um, we exceeded the budget mm -hmm. last year with, and we, so we've bumped the budget up this year for revenue. Is it up enough? Uh, did we have anything extraordinary last year that led to the higher number? How does that all fit in with the idea that we weren't going to rent to any gigantic tent? Weddings that last for five days, right? All that kind of stuff. I think it's uh, you know I think we've done done pretty well with the rentals, it, without having you know I, we haven't I didn't get a single complaint this year. No. About the rentals, I think it all went really smoothly. It did. Um, it's cutting the, the the size of the tent was really helpful. Yeah. Okay. You know, I thought all weddings just lasted for five days. Yeah. <laughs> the problem is the wedding didn't last for five days, but the tent did. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, exactly, yeah. It right. made the whole the park unusable. Right. Five, right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have a tendency to budget revenues conservatively um, and then oh, okay. make everybody happy and say we did a lot better. We got more revenue in than we expected. But when you're trying to balance the budget, you know. <clears throat> Anything else on... Harbor revenue. Who is mainly Stevie? lobster? Oh, that's, um, Go ahead, Stevie. Uh, I just, I had a question, and my, my memory is not what it used to be. Back in 1415, and I, I sort of remember that discussion when the boat club, uh, let's see, what is it, uh, 0827, that, that lease was 13,000. And it's been now one, two, three, mm. this would be the fourth year. That it's only 6,500. Is there some I reason? I mean, I'm sure that land. I'm guessing that they, they never paid that. They much hadn't in one paid. Year. They probably had hadn't paid one oh, year. Oh, that's so right. Two payments came in in one fiscal year. In the year. fiscal year, that's what happened. But is there some reason? I'm sure the assessment of that property has gone up over the years. Uh, that's that one of the things, like actually, the select board has asked the town manager to look mm -hmm. into. Is yeah, those leases I are coming up for renewal? Right. Um, I mean, because that affects. It's a wealthy group of people. It's a small group of, of Rockport right. residents, too. Right. And if they're getting that kind of a tax break. No, it's not a, it's no, not a tax, tax break. break a, but I mean, if they're getting that kind of a break on that particular lease, it's, which seems to me like that's a pretty yeah. good Goodness. rent le or lease rate mm -hmm. <laughs> for, what they're, for what they're getting. And for the fact that it is restricted because it's a private club. Right. Which I used to belong to, so I'm not bad mouthing. <laughs> so, uh, I, but I, I that that is, it just seems like a real big, a real low number. Yeah, as I say, the select board has asked the manager to, to look at those leases, and and it, I think it comes up for renewal this right, year. Yeah, and you'll hear from them. Um, they're 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 gonna say that the 6,500 is more than they they can afford to pay. 
that they provide service to the town, that they provide sailing lessons for kids. and. Um, <clears throat> when does it come up? What what month? The end of the year? The end of June? Sure. It's uh, this. We'll it's this, it. it's this, this year. Sometime. Sometime. I don't know point. whether it's this season or, or. Does it coincide with with the people that uh, the lobster? Yeah. No. Those, it no that's a different. That one's out out a little bit. The lobster lease is another couple of years. Oh, that, it is. That oh, okay. Gets, no, but I mean the same. They're all in the same month when they expire, right? I don't think so. No, not not necessarily. I think it's, no. It's a. Is that something that might be easier to? That way we don't yeah. overlook things if they're all out in June. Yeah. But the boat club lease, uh, when it comes up, it, you know, maybe I'll, I'll let you guys deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. The last time we renewed it, they all came in and, and yeah. uh, actually they, what they wanted last time was uh, stability more than anything. Mm -hmm. They wanted a long-term lease so that they could plan uh, for what their expenses would be over a certain number of years. They didn't want to be guessing every year as to what the lease was. I think that was their biggest uh, yeah. request the last yeah. time. And so, you know, when it comes up again this time, you know, I think the select board will take a look at that. And, and is, is the Camden Yacht Club a, a comparable situation? And, and no, what no. is their situation? No, no, I their situation well, is a lot better. There, that, uh, but that's that a piece of town. By the town. It's owned yeah, by the town. town. It's owned by the yeah. town. And it's, and they, it's rented to the Camden Select Board has to meet in the Yacht Club clubhouse once a year to, to assert their <laughs> squatting rights or something like that. <laughs> oh, is that true? Really? Yeah, yeah they, yeah. they meet down there once a year. But yeah, that is owned by the town, so it's similar. It's a much bigger facility. Yes, it is. And there's, uh, there's I'm just a lot wondering if we, if we know what, the, what, the, what that facility, what Camden thinks that facility is worth. It just, it's just a stake in the ground. To yeah, think we about. can find out. Yeah. I don't see any reason not to give them the stability they're asking for, <coughs> but the price seems a little bit low. Well, we'll have to see, but that's you all could part of Give them stability by building in an increase. You right. know what it is. Yeah. And that's the link. There's no hope. Yeah. So well, well, this, <clears throat> I've sort of waited till the end here because, you know, the harbor's been kind of a pet bugaboo of mine for a while. And <laughs> if you look at the, uh, the bottom bottom line, the net harbor budget. Um, you know, you go back that it cost us thirty thousand, seventeen thousand, fourteen thousand. So we were making progress for a while in in making the harbor that it was self uh, self funding, and then it jumped up uh, last year fifty one thousand, and and this year we're looking at thirty seven thousand, and. Um, Again, I've expressed this. I, you know, I think that this ought to be a, a break-even proposition. Um, you know, I, I think there's a lot of money on the harbor. Uh, I think, uh, although not everybody, uh, there are a lot of boat owners that are very expensive to maintain. Uh, I'm all for the people with kayaks and rowboats and stuff like that. That's great. You know, give them a break. But... Uh, again, the idea that we kind of balance our budget uh, for the harbor on the backs of people that, you know, may spend very, very little bit of time down there. So this year, the Harbor Committee did uh, increase our harbor fees uh, a little bit. But as I go through and look at them in perspective here, uh, for instance, line 0808 on the moorings, uh, did our, did the did the increase that we do only garner us another thousand bucks? It did because of previously miscalculated revenues. Um, prior to Megan coming along, the way that we calculated it was just, you know, we it never went through. This year, I went through after the, you made the change, you all made the change, or the Harbor Committee made the change to increase it. I actually took the stack of bills and, and added each, each and every one up. Um, with the price per foot, because I used to just take an average, at which ended up being like eight thousand dollars short. So that is a, that's a much, safe, that is a, that is the number of bills I sent out. Um, there will be that'll increase by, I would say a thousand or so with uh, a few turnovers that will happen. We'll we'll make a little bit more there, um, but that if you look, you know, in in sixteen seventeen the actual <coughs> collection was was fifty thousand. So that's I mean that's based on that revenue number is based on the actual bills that went out and that we'll receive back. Well, that's disappointing to me. And, you know, if I could go back and do it over again, I would have increased that uh, fair amount Those more. Uh, same thing about the tie-offs here. I mean, there's been no increase. 
<clears throat> uh, those things are highly desirable. Is that something that we increased this year? Obviously no. not. No. Sam, would you come up and, and grab a mic if you wouldn't mind because the nah, folks at home. He's got a I know, but sleeping still. baby. She's asleep back there. Oh, this is going to be. <laughs> this is a first. Yeah. Oh. Well, shows the dedication of yeah, our town volunteers. Yeah, but yeah we want the, we want the folks at home to be able to hear. Really sweet. Hear yeah. Comment. yeah. So I, I just meant to say that uh, we've been trying to slowly <laughs> reduce the number of those tie offs in favor of of dinghy spots so we've you know sort of focused on um, you know convincing people to take to take an alternative there and, and uh, you know, try to shorten the wait list for the alternative okay and if i recall last year we we decided in the budget process last year we were going to put away some money for a dinghy dock and we decided let's spend it all at once and then give people an opportunity to to sign up for multiple years and guarantee a spot how, how did that go over i see the revenue that, numbers aren't here yet but is that coming up this spring when we when we build them i'll put that out there to yeah. folks um i mean because it'll get built this year that's why and the then six thousand we'll dollar budget number was higher last right. year and that one is because we were going to offer to to let people prepay for a couple of years and guarantee them a spot uh in order to pay for the the dinghy dock all in one year right and so that, we'll that's the 0824 yeah and that's why that number is down because we were anticipating and i like i say i don't know i guess we don't know yet how that's going to play we don't out. know how it'll play out and we don't know you know if if people will go for that or not i mean i've spoken to some people that are willing just so they don't have to show up on july on june 1st at my office and get a sticker yeah. and they get three years out of it mm -hmm. um you know it's a kind of a program that i couldn't really instill until we have those built mm -hmm. so and and those will go in this spring that's that's as soon plan. as we build them. I don't know if you caught earlier, um, Abby was saying that they can't really start building those and driving the pilings until the, the docks go in and then they have, they measure and they'll have to measure and figure that out. We were hoping for the end of this month, but, but the, the snow is, hasn't been, you know, there's still snow in. There's still ice in the harbor. Yeah. Is the, is the line 0820, 0821 only because the rest of the year I mean, there's no money budgeted, but yet we've got revenue in. The previous years indicate more than what you've got predicted for the upcoming year. Budgeted. Not really, because last year was $475 for electricity, and wa I mean, water was a little bit more, but... Yeah, but and that's a lease. That's based on the well, mainly lobster lease, and I, don't, I think that that's... Oh, that's excuse that me. is okay. Um, that well, got put in the wrong. I'm, I'm pretty sure that that got just the two put blank in the wrong. lines together for the budgeted number on 820 and 821. Hmm. Hmm. Wonder why that was. I don't remember. Is that reimbursement I, from the? It goes into the mainly lobster lease. That's what. Oh. That's <coughs> what it got separated out. But so that's not the fees that uh, the boaters are paying for their hookup when they tie up. No, we just we've been putting that in to, with dockage. Okay. That goes in with. So that's somewhere else. The electrical for the for the um, for the do the float service. You mean for when people come overnight dockage? Yeah, I mean electricity reimbursement, the water reimbursement. Th that's the mainly lobster. Those are the fishermen that that pay that. And where does twigs? Where does that come in? They do not. We. They pay. Actually, that's that that's them too. They pay. I think 150 for water and. Two hundred dollars for power. I'm sorry, this is new for me. So I don't know how to make it stop. Did the <laughs> the service van, the food van that was there last year, did they pay anything? Where would that show up? That would be in the um, rent uh, park rental fees. And they did have a, they did have an electrical. Um, fee yep. last year on top of their um Who's, who sets price. the prices is it the park the uh the select, well, select board committee? ultimately uh, well um, uh, who we who we, let me ask the, the question that i really want to ask which is how often do we relook yeah, every at what we're doing and decide whether we want it's time for a three percent raise and in, in, in things like 
The rest of the world does. Really the fees are set annually. Taxes go up. By who? Uh, the Harbor Committee recommends to the Select Board, and they did this year. Do, do they do we recommend? Do they recommend consistently that things be raised every year? They haven't been, but this year they did. Okay. Uh, so this year, and, and Doug was, Doug can probably speak to that more than I can because he was instrumental in that. Good. Well, yeah, I mean, I did. I, again, I feel strongly that the harbor should be a zero bottom line for us and worked very closely with Sam and, uh, and Abby and the harbor committee, and we did make these changes. Um, and again, it's just a little discouraging for me that we're still 37000 bucks short. I presume that we charge um, <clears throat> pleasure users a higher effective rate than working users. Is that uh, fair? Not necessarily. Well, I'll make a couple points in yeah, that please. regard. Um, <clears throat> it, it, it's similar, I would say. Mm -hmm. Currently, the commercial users are getting a pretty big break on some things. Mm -hmm. um, they're you know guaranteed a lot more access, whereas the recreational users um, you know aren't guaranteed dock access you know whenever they want it. Mm -hmm. um, but but I'll also make the point that I made to the select board during a presentation a couple months ago, which was that the town really is subsidizing you know businesses by mm -hmm. you know by giving a, a very low lease to mainly lobster. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, e each one of those fishing boats, Abby could probably tell you more accurately how many, is 15 or something? There's 15, yeah, 14 total. Um, you know, our, our um, you know, small businesses. And, and beyond that, there's, oh, you know, three, m maybe four boat yards that operate, you know, really off of the, the town ramp and the town docks to do their commissioning and decommissioning. And that's, uh, you know, speaking as someone who owns a boat yard, um, you know, we pay, a, we pay a lot to the town to have the ability to, to do that, to do commissioning and decommissioning on the water, and, it, and it's valuable. I think, you, I think you misunderstand me, Sam. Yeah. I'm arguing f that, the, pr that the, the professionals yep. should be given a discount over the pleasure boats. I understood that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I'm, and I'm, I'm actually arguing the reverse. Yes, you are. <laughs> and I'm, so, but you're arguing in a way that I'm, that I'm getting confused. But my, yeah. but my, my, my question still remains is basically, how often do we, we look at these things? Yep. And how often do we reassess what competitive harbors are doing and um, where we are in the realm of things. The harbor is an incredible attraction for the town, and the fact that it's a working harbor, to me, makes it much more attractive than simply a pleasure boat harbor. Yep. Um, and so I'd like the mix of businesses and, and marinas and, and pleasure boats to remain a healthy mix, for a healthy mix for everybody. Um, but like Doug, I think, I think that the... Um, I'd like to see the harbor um, closer to a break-even. I don't care if it doesn't break even. I'd like to see, for example, uh, a real solid look at solar power since electricity costs is, are, are one of our bigger expenses down there. Um, and the plan, the capital improvements plan for the harbor running out over a few years is really quite impressive and I think quite nice. Um, so I would like to keep the harbor alive, alive and well. Um, I think that's a big part of the increase over the last couple of years is those deposits to the reserve accounts. Mm -hmm. That's that's a, at $19,000 a year. That's almost all of the uh, yes. the well, increase in the expenses of yep. the harbor. Um, and I'm, I mean, it would be nice if the harbor was break even, but I, I'm not, I'm not I'm hell not bent on having there. it get there no, uh, because I do think it, that I there is. I mean, I agree that there, there are some people in town who use it way more than other people in town do. But still, we are providing a resource uh, for um, the person who lives on the other side of Route 1 who is, you know, maybe a lower-income Rockport resident. They, they come down and use that, that Harbor Park and have lunch down there with their kids and things like that. So there is some value, I think, to the town in doing that. Um, I wish we were closer to break even, but it's n that's not a particular goal of mine. Uh, I think we should maximize the revenue stream from the harbor, and I think those who use it um, 
a lot should pay their share. Mm -hmm. um, and I think this year, with Doug and, and Sam's help, I think we moved more in the right direction with that. I think there's still more room to go there, personally. I, I think um, the, the place that that, the most likely place for increased revenue, which is a little bit of a challenge, but it, it's, it's disappointing to me that the overnight docking, that we only have revenues of $9,000 for overnight docking. Granted, you know, I'm a boater, I know Rockport Harbor is not the best harbor to be at the dock if it's blowing out of the south, southeast. But a lot of the other times, it's, 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 a nice, it's a nice harbor. You get a little bit of roll, but it's not like Camden's roll. I mean, I have a mooring in the Outer Harbor in Camden, and I can't even stay on the boat there in the summertime. But, you know, the overnight dockage, you know, um, we've got 200 and how many, 300 feet of dock now? Three, 300 feet of dock space, and it, it's rare that it's all full at night. And if we were if we were 50 percent full every night, you'd see that number jump from 10,000 to 50,000 pretty quickly. Um, but it's marketing it, getting people used to coming there as an alternative to Camden. It's it's. It's not Camden, it's not the Camden experience, but it's also, it's not Camden, it's not the yeah. Camden experience. So for some people, it's quieter. They're, you know, they don't want to be at the, you know, they spend a couple days at the dock at Camden. It's too hustle, bustle, too much activity. And so our docks are a quieter experience. And, but we don't seem to have broken into that market of getting those boats in here that are going to pay the big dollars um, and I think that'll take time. Yeah. I mean, because I see some of my but that's clients. That's a place where you'd see you know, an increase. Coming into Camden. And I always tell my clients when they're <laughs> tied up in Camden, I say, hey, you know, we've got an awful nice harbor just down the road here. You could come over here and tie up. And, sure. and, and it will take time because a lot of these people who come in the, in the big Look expensive this. boats, they have a routine that they do every mm -hmm. year, and it's, it'll so when, take some time. I mean, we have cameras around. I mean, if the camera were such on the front of the harbor master's office, um, why can't we put that or link it to the town website? Yeah. I mean, you know, that will help. I mean, the other interesting thing that I know Steve does in, in Camden is uh, for the shoulder seasons, mm -hmm. he... Uh, oh, thanks for blowing that off. That's all right. <laughs> he uh, um, had somebody come in and uh, uh, he had a program where people who came in, not in the high season, but in the shoulder mm -hmm. season, and he said, Hey, you, you come in, you tie up, you pay the fee, but if you show me a receipt from a Camden restaurant, then I'll give you a little break on your, on your uh, mooring fees. Um, and then that, what that does is lets people know that the harbor is there. It encourages the businesses in town and stuff like that. It does put a little dent in the revenue for it, but a short-term one, I think, that, so that people may come back and do it again. We also could, I, could I at least get a grunt about that does have some merit before you jump off to something else? <laughs> I mean, the, the, the camera, the camera thing, the, right? The camera yeah. that's the there doesn't isn't really cameras. function. Function. Well, that's what I said. If it works, so right. it doesn't work. So why don't we? But that's on the list for. We have a possibility of a grant to replace the, Cascade Foundation. Yeah, for the next grant round to and upgrade can, the cameras. And we can get that perhaps hooked up to the town website. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do Thank we you. now have the weather station hooked up to the town yep. website? Uh, <clears throat> to the town website, Diane. No, it's to the har It's yeah. through the harbor website. It's, yeah, it's through the yeah on the harbor website. Yep. So, um, but you know, the marketing of the dockage, the dockage. I mean, three hundred feet <laughs> of dock space at what do we charge a foot? Two dollars a foot for the big big girls. Uh, yeah. Three three dollars a foot. Yeah, a hundred foot a hundred foot a foot boat coming in. And it's four hundred bucks a night. Um, we do get some from, uh, you know, Steve and, and Jimmy or in Camden. That's, those, that's where we get the big boats because we're really not on the radar of the big boats. If they, if, they, if they can't get into Camden, Jimmy and Steve will send them here and say, you, you might want to try uh, Rockport. And they get here and then they say, it's really nice, it's quiet. We've got, you know, showers right there. We've got everything right there. Um, but that's a, that's a place where we could see it up to, we should see an uptick in revenues and we have you know in 14 15 we made 3000 now we're looking at 10 so we keep right. building hopefully keep building when we find out about the grant from cascade i think it's after this fiscal year 
next it's in, after July 1? Was that what he was? I mean, we can't guarantee that, but right. that's. He, I didn't say, I yeah. just asked when you would find right. out about it. No. This year. He, he was, one, that was one of his interests, was getting the harbor cameras uh, up and running. Um, and the experience with the new cameras that we've been putting up um, around the town office and at uh, uh, Route 17 and 90, those, those cameras are extremely affordable and they, the quality of the cameras are, is, is excellent. Um, and they're a lot less money than the other cameras. So, so I mean, it, Doug, I think that's a place if, you know, it's marketing, getting the boat owners to know that they can come in here. Um, we've got a nice friendly harbor. Our price per foot is a dollar under, yep. dollar under dollar other, plus, yeah. other places. We also have, uh, one of the things that we've been doing is for uh, mooring holders, people that are, I think we're still doing that, if you're a mooring holder and there's um, nobody on the docks at four in the afternoon or something. After you, four, yeah. After four, you can come in and spend the night for half, half price. Dollar a dollar a foot. A dollar yeah. a and foot. And that's Rockport residents or mooring holders, so yeah. residents and or mooring holders. So if, you know, you've got a 30-foot boat and you want to come into the dock and hang out at the dock, it's 30 bucks for the night, and you can go up to the restaurant and... Um, to try and get, you know, more uh, use of the docks because that, you know, that number could easily go from ten thousand to fifty thousand dollars with um, just a change in the way, mm -hmm. you know, people work. I mean, it's not easy. I mean, Rockland has a you go down to Rockland docks and Rockland docks sit large. You know, they don't they're not full all the time. Camden's docks are it's Camden, so their docks are. Could we uh, Full a lot. just send out a press release to some of the marine publications? And I mean, now would be the time to do it, to hit like the points east, yeah. that, yeah. Little, yeah. that little yeah. newspaper thing, and even some of the bigger magazines saying, you know, Rockport announces uh, its, its rates for dockage have not increased this year, and here's all the things yeah. you can get, showers and electric hookup and pump out and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. I've talked to points east about getting in there in June. I think a June you know, yeah. issue would be, um, but um, I could look into and, and, and like I say, if you do it as a press release, you don't have, yeah, right. you don't have to right. pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> so. Anything else on the harbor? Nothing? Okay, I'm going to suggest that we have Ben come up now uh, because we have community, planning community development, but it's, that's just Rick because we don't have anybody else here. We can let Ben go a little bit earlier and get the library and the library building done. Um, Tom, do you want to come sit at the table? Or? I'm good. Okay. You came you in and I saw you get your dinner. It looks like you're done with your dinner. So if you want to come sit over here, feel free. Oh, I'm not shy. <laughs> oh, come on. I know you, yes. But I'm, I just wanted, I didn't want you to think we were ignoring you or anything like that. No, Mike will be brought to me. I'm still in platter. He deserves gold, Jeff. So we'll do uh, library, page 213. Uh, home sweet home. <laughs> so with the library budget, uh, the same thing applies. All of the things that are in gray, um, I'm still not sure I understand what the blue is, but all the things that are in gray are things that are reimbursed from the uh, library committee at 100%. So, you know, all the items that are in gray are... Uh, reimbursed back from the library committee. So the town pays for all the um, uh, staff, uh, staff benefits, uh, basically the maintenance of the building and all of that stuff, and the library committee pays for all of the programming and training and operational uh, things that are in the library budget. It was helpful, we did this about three or four years ago just to make it, because it was confusing about who's paying for what, because uh, you know so many lines of this budget are paid for by the uh, library committee. Um, so it gives you an idea. So there's not a lot of changes. Actually, I think your bottom line number went down, was it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, your bottom line yeah. went down, budget went down 9%. 
Yeah. I think the, is that right? That's right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The goal here is, you know, we're trying, we're trying to build a new library. Uh, and so uh, the goal here is to be as fiscally conservative here as we can. You know, I will say that I'm, I'm really proud of the work the library does. Uh, they do a great job. We have a great staff down there. They just continue to chug away down there with great programming, great ideas, good participation. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really proud of the work that they do. Um, so, you know, there's not much change in the budget. I think, you know, I've got a couple things highlighted here. Uh, the electrical repair line 3614, you, you'll see a reduction there. It's a pretty substantial reduction. But that, a lot of that has to do with moving into the new building. There was a lot of things that we had to change and fix to get it library quality stuff. Uh, we're not going to have to do that again, so that electrical repair and maintenance line is dropped. Uh, uh, and again, the uh, but again, the other one is general repair and maintenance is the same thing. We've done a lot of work. I can't remember why we haven't spent anything out of that general repair line. Have we spent something out of the uh, 3623? Yeah, I think that was for the lighting fixtures. That we, and it hasn't shown up in the. Uh, that was after. Yeah, after December. January, yeah, we had we had to go in and change a bunch of lighting, the lighting fixtures because they were buzzing well, and yeah, they, 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 were, twelve they the were twelve foot long ones that you can't get you can't anymore. get the parts for. Yeah, have we have we ever been reimbursed for the the water damage stuff yet? Did, uh, they, he ended up claiming it on his insurance, insurance and the yeah. library committee paid our portion of the deductible. Mm -hmm. We voted you guys learned about it that we wanted to just pay the thousand because yep. we thought it'd be goodwill <laughs> yep mm -hmm. thank you but they um uh he he did finally after a lot of persuading <laughs> decide to put it on his insurance he said i've never had an insurance claim before and i said well that's what your insurance is for mm -hmm. you know um there's still making money on it so the other the other question I had backing up to the top again was the twenty one fifty five, the overtime. I know when I've done the the warrants before, I have seen overtime booked out to. Uh, they don't typically take overtime. They usually take comp time. Yeah, they get comp time. Well, this was I have seen overtime mm -hmm. on the sheets before, and that's why I was wondering. And I think it was Ben, maybe the other Ben. Yeah, yeah, it wouldn't be him. No, no, that's um, me. That's obviously. They well, I know I've seen it before. Say, so I mean, the wondering. only time that I could think that we, we would have had overtime, and I still think it was comp time, was when we did the move. Right. Well, I'm just wondering I mean, whether it was sort of like Abby does, where you just yeah, that would have been in last you juggle years. things around and give them a No, for full-time employees, I would put it in overtime. Okay. If I see it again, I'll let you know. Yeah, let me know. I mean, because they, they take comp time. I, I, don't, I don't recall yeah. ever seeing someone in the library take overtime. Mm-mm. I couldn't dig up my copy of the auditor's report in time for the meeting tonight, so maybe Megan or somebody. There was a paragraph in there about the library and the cost in the library. Um, just it's a big amount of money, and um, somehow they felt the need to tell us to pay attention or something like that. Do you remember the... Uh, their concern was more about how their warrant process works and how their cash is handled more than their necessary budget. And we're working with the lawyer, with Phil, now to try to come up with a way that will both satisfy the lawyer and, and the auditor and satisfy the agreement that was made when the library committee was established. Um, uh, remind me what the question is, though, here. I, it's accounting procedures, right, as I recall. I mean, yeah. right now, for example, the library committee has a warrant, and then, then they have a checking account that they write a check from mm -hmm. and sign the check from that account for the endowment. And the auditors were saying that's 
technically that's town money and that the town treasurer, who is Rick, should be signing those checks. Mm. Uh, so, um, and they were and they were very against the pro the practice of handwriting checks. Uh, they said that's where uh, they were not alluding to fraudulent activity, but that is a place where fraudulent activity would happen is when you're still handwriting checks and not running it through an accounting software. Um, so those were all concerns that they had. Uh, the original agreement set up uh, when the library committee was established said something about the select board signing off on their warrants, right. which that doesn't happen. Um, there we learned uh, with Phil the other day that the original agreement says that the library committee will actually reimburse for half of the library director's salary, which hasn't happened as long as I've yeah, been here. As long as I've been here. Wow. Um, so we're trying to weed through some of that stuff and make sure that the intent of how the library committee was established is maintained, but also make sure that we're satisfying the requirements of the auditor and the lawyer at the same time. So I just found it, I think, where Smith, the auditor, said that there was an error in over-assessing stemmed from a warrant article that didn't pass, but no. was included in the municipal appropriations. Yeah, that's that, not that's a, that's a separate issue. That's a separate. Right. But those were their main concerns with the library and how the the library cash is handled. Uh, what was the part about the library director's salary? It, in the original agreement, uh, that was time back in like 1980 or whenever the library committee was established. In that agreement, it says that the library committee will reimburse 50 percent of the library director's salary. Um, and someplace that changed. Yeah. And, and that was back way. probably when the only employee of the library was the library director. There wasn't anybody else. Uh, Wait, before my time. And <laughs> if I, if and anybody knows, since it would be Steve. Eighty-six, hmm. because I ran for the library committee in eighty-seven. I think we had a different date for town meetings at that point. And I don't remember because I was treasurer too for a while. Right. There used to, there was there's language in there that there says the library and I've the never library seen committee that. will have their own treasurer. Well, we do. So that's it potentially was, 30000 bucks there, right? Correct. Times, 30, times 35 years. And our auditors are concerned that the way the library committee was established, that they don't have, that agreement doesn't have the authority to direct a deputy treasurer for the town, mm -hmm. which that agreement directs that the library committee will select a treasurer, which will then be the deputy. deputy treasurer for the town. And uh, our auditors are saying that that agreement doesn't have the statute authority to dictate who the deputy treasurer of the town is. Nor, nor does our lawyer feel, feel that way either. So we have some cleanup to do. Yeah, there's some work to do. There's no, there was no inference of any wrongdoing. No, right? no, no. There's at but, all. Uh, but but they we, were saying, can we take thirty thousand though <laughs> this year out of our? Well, it's gonna have to. Budget. We're gonna have to do some more research because if there were any ever any amendments made to that, we haven't found we those haven't amendments. And I would assume that if all this time that the finance director or the treasurer of the town at some point would have been collecting that money if that was the agreement. So I don't understand if that was the agreement, why it would have stopped. So I'm hoping that there's some amended agreement or something that happened that would have alleviated that mm -hmm. or changed it. I just have a quick question for Ben. Mm -hmm. At the next meeting, could you bring the agreement? Uh, I have a copy of it. I can yeah. send it out. I, would you? Uh, yeah. yeah. Thank mm -hmm. you. I'd like to look at it. And is uh, it I certainly, w excuse me. I certainly wouldn't, you know, say let's go back and collect over the years <laughs> if there isn't a thing. Gee, that's nice. But if, you know, if indeed that's how it's supposed to be, then I would be all for well, the next, putting it in this year's budget. The next question then is: does, does the agreement say that the library committee has to reimburse all these other costs? Uh, if that's, yes. It does. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's there's whole language about what the library. <laughs> committee was supposed to be responsible for. And I Getting think, you know, as, all the time. Yeah. as you start yeah. going through it, I mean, this document was created in 1980. Right. And, it, you know, at that time they were not considering internet fees, web posting fees, some other stuff. Which you know, we still do. Right. It, so th there's been some changes and the, the, the agreement hasn't kept up. Um, hasn't kept up with what is actually happening. Um, over time, except without without knowing the actual language of the agreement. I mean, mm -hmm. the agreement stipulates what the town is going to pay for, and says the library committee will pay the rest. Then, 
don't care about the internet fees or the web hosting or anything like that. We need to see the agreement, and it would be, I wonder if all the library committee's minutes are available somewhere. It should be. Probably. It should be, yeah. The, the other thing, you keep talking about the agreement, and I, there were numerous agreements. There was the vote that set up the library right. committee. But, and then the 1980, I don't know if, because I don't think Margie, or Margie Dodge, mm -hmm. had become a department head. That was, that's separate from that 1980 agreement, is it not? No. It because the library committee not. used to pay all the bills. Mm -hmm. Right. Everything. They paid 100% of the library director's salary. I moved. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but. So, because I remember those, and Don Willard was town manager when all these changes, and he was quite taken aback when he did his first budget, assuming that that money, the library endowment, was the town's money. And so he prepared his budget based on... Who's Don? Don Willard? Don Willard. Yeah. yeah. Don he, Willard. He did the town budget, right. assuming that it was the town's, right. and he was about a million short. I think. Yeah, right. and that was, I think he came the year before I did. And so he... That was when the town did take over paying because the library director had no benefits. Her salary was absolutely insane. And our, our intention is not to no, I charge know. the library committee more. Our intention <laughs> well, is. is to clean up the document and make sure right, that right. everyone is on the same page yep. in terms of who's supposed to be responsible for signing the warrants, who who is supposed to be responsible for signing the checks and discharging those. And if, if the library committee is supposed to operate as its own entity, then they need to set up their own 501c3. They need to get their own tax ID number. And right now they operate all of that under the town. And that's where the auditor's concerns came from. Yeah, the auditor basically said to us, you got to do one or the other. Right. You're, e you're either you're yeah, in for a penny, right. in for a pound, as you right. say. You're either a town department and you abide by the town rules and, and the treasurer signs the checks and they run through the town accounting, or you become a separate 501c3 and you can direct your own finances uh, at that point. And I think that, I mean, their, their concerns are, I mean, it's the right time. The time to address this is when you're not having a problem. Because if a problem arises at some point, then it's too late. And I think, you know, we have to look at the whole thing. And, and if the agreement was they should pay half the, the library director's salary, then we have to look at that both in terms of the agreement, but also in terms of the status of the endowment. If paying half the library's salary will, will drain that endowment in five years, then it's not something that's probably in the best interest of the town. This is... As a committee member for the library, this is slightly concerning that this is the first I've heard of it. That we haven't been told that this was a thing that was happening. Uh, Ann was, I believe. I think Ann got a, an email what? on the auditor situation. Like the, the, the library director's salary yeah. thing. We I, haven't well, talked I, about I that. I heard that until tonight. I have yeah. never that. heard that. We <laughs> like never just read it. had that conversation with the, like yesterday. With the lawyer. Yesterday yeah. with he, the lawyer. And he's the one that actually brought up the library director's salary portion. And I'm not saying it's not a thing, mm -hmm. but it's just I would like to be involved in the conversation <laughs> as a committee member. Well, Ann has been going through this process with us. Megan, can, can you just give me, because I have all those historical documents, copies of, and as many thousands of times as I've read them, starting back in 86. Does Ben have all of those? Point, can you get copies of that information? I think the information I, we have was provided by Kate Monroe. And yeah. do you know what it was from? Uh, you know, like, I can forward you, if the, you have anything, the document. If you have anything else, Stevie. Because I have Stevie, these three things that. Yeah, if you have anything else that kind of clarifies. I would like to look at the stuff that you guys yeah. are looking at, just yeah, for I my own too. peace of mind. Mm -hmm. Yes, if you could send me a PDF, Megan. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, back to this year's library budget. Any more, <laughs> any more questions? Okay, um, then library building, page 235. It's not letting me open up my budget. Where's library building? Okay. What? Mm -hmm. you? Mm -hmm. And this is a. Uh, this is just for the. Just, to, just to the life support on the old building, yeah. basically. Yeah. So My I said it last up. year, and I'll say it again this year. Why are we paying two thousand eight hundred and fifty-one dollars to keep up a building that we're gonna tear down anyways? Why not just get rid of it? <laughs> 
anybody else who wants to. Yeah. I, I don't think you want to tear down the building until you've made a decision what you're going to do with my advice is you don't tear it down until you've made a decision what to do with the, you know, what we're going to do with the library. You know, when, once that vote is taken, then I'll be, I'll be, the board can come forward, but I, I'm not going to make the recommendation to tear down the building until we've, we've decided to build the new one. Once, once we've passed that bond, I'll, uh, you know, I'll be the first one to say, let's tear down that old building. And that property, the, two, the, the major portion of that, more than two-thirds of it, is brush cutting. And you may very well tear down that building, but you're still going to have to cut the brush. Yeah. So we're talking about 800 bucks. And there might be more brush. Say, <laughs> there will be more yeah. brush. It does, doesn't seem like it got done last year, so well, it's another year. It's another point. Um, if and when the town votes to have a library built, when on what budget will that construction expense and donations, where will all of that live? Under the uh, library's budget, question. we haven't I mean, figured that piece probably out yet. Probably would be a one-time budget for construction, and then the, right. and then the maintenance would pass to this budget. To, the, budget, to, the, library, to, to the library, to the library budget. building budget. Is, where so, the building? so what will happen is, if the library vote gets passed, all the expenditures go through the bond process. So there's no real like budget for that because once the bonds process uh, approved, they understand that the bond is supposed to be expended for the library building itself. So the bond will actually have its own budget, per se. Okay. Not so, something that has to be approved uh, yeah. again and appropriated again by the voters of the town. Okay. So then now, what will happen, now then, then, then what finish. will happen is once that has been passed, we will get rid of this one Lime Rock Street budget altogether, mm -hmm. and it will go back into the library like it was before. Let me ask one further question. A million and a half dollars or thereabouts will have to be raised. Mm -hmm. Under whose auspices and under whose control? Oh, we're working on that. That, that okay. piece is the piece that we're that working on. Because that would be the thing that you would need a 501c3 for. Right. And that, it and comes under the, the town. And that's that is basically what generated this whole conversation concern to begin yeah. with. Right. Okay. Is, is, <laughs> is, <laughs> Just, I, what happened to Tom? Did Tom take off? Jacket's still there. Jacket's still there. <laughs> but I, uh, it, Linda's gone too, in case you hadn't noticed. But, but her jacket's still there. Oh, <laughs> but backing up just a tad, um, Tracy Murphy spent literally yes, days yes. in the working with Linda and going through all of the old records. Um, Shall I go find the town clerk in question? Yeah. Well, but, the, but, I mean, but she did some research Tracy, at the town reports, I remember. I yeah, Tracy did, a, Tracy did a lot of work and a lot of research uh, on, on this whole question of, you know, the, how it got formed and what the rules were. She did an amazing amount of work uh, back, and I can't remember, even remember what, what the reason was. It was before your time, I yeah, think. Yeah, I don't. But she spent, literally spent days at that back desk going through old records, old minutes, finding stuff. Um, <coughs> she did so, a lot of work on the deeds, too. That yeah, was she part did. Of it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Speaking of deeds, did we ever clear the Bach deed? No. Not yet. That would be something for the library committee meeting. Did Anything you know else that the, on uh, the, uh, the site of the library where the the library that used to be called Tavern Lot? Oh, really? Yeah. Because yeah. The hotel. it was a tavern yeah. and a hotel. hotel there. Yeah. yeah, the big hotel was. Yeah. Okay. Was Anything else on the library building budget? Um, if not, we can jump back to playing at community right development. Yeah. One o three. Page one o three. Get to Feel kind of nobody talked to me much. <laughs> I guess that's a good thing. Yeah, thank you, Ben. I'd, yeah. I'd take yeah. that. And, I'd take that and run. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, have a wonderful night, everybody. Thanks, ben, well, as far as I can tell, Ben, we're still going to pay your salary. Well, thank somebody you. is. Thank you. <laughs> At least half. Yeah. At least half. Yeah. So where is he? Of course, I'm only Public one voice. Assistance, fire. Keep, keep going. 103, 104, page number, if that helps. It's not going to help. He's looking at it, so. Planning. 
So the planning, as you as you're well aware, the planning uh, director has left the building. Uh, um, uh, so we don't have uh, the planner here to go through the budget that was developed, but it, it remains the there's a budget still there for a planning planning and community development director salary administrative assistant, uh, CEO, um, uh, video tech for their meetings, all of the stuff. Uh, if you go down to the purchased and, and contracted services, uh, is uh, computer software licenses, it's uh, that uh, 3015 is for the Esri software, which is the um, GIS software that we use. Uh, the web hosting is uh, the increase again in the map geo, which we've seen in the other budgets. Uh, you saw it in public works and in, in um, planning for the um, a map geo increase, uh, cost of map geo, and increase for GOS, GIS services. Um, it, under uh, miscellaneous, miscellaneous professional services 3060, there's $10,000 in there for the comp plan review. Um, as you, you remember, we're doing the, the um, uh, review now, and then when it comes to the rewrite, we're, that'll be next year of what, uh, what need, the sections that need to be rewritten. That money is in there to hire a consultant to come in and help with that, and that's uh, the estimate for that is $10,000. And then that we also had and left in there, there's a uh, $5,000 uh, in there for some outside assistance for uh, planning for use of the RES uh, site um, to do some design and engineering and whatever work for um, moving that, prod, that concept forward. Do we have a concrete plan for, <laughs> no pun intended, for developing a master plan for the the RES, no. that's what this money that's is what money, for. That's what this money's but, for, no. is to is start. on the schedule, or? It's something it was, uh, the answer is no. no. Um, okay. But we do need to think about it at some point. To have some yep. money there to, to have, you know, have something to start with. Yep. Um, uh, miscellaneous board expense, civil engineer, that one, that's, that has an offsetting revenue. We haven't used it, but it's one of those things that if we, if we are going to have, uh, as part of the uh, site plan review process or anything, that they, there's a requirement for an outside civil engineer, there's an expense there, and then the the, the um, petitioner or the uh, applicant would uh, be paying that uh, fee. So we haven't used it yet, but uh, you can see back a few years ago that there was uh, money collected for that. Um, so we just haven't had to use that so far this year. Um, um, you see a reduction in advertising, um, you know, just because we're not using it and I didn't think we needed to get into a lot more advertising. Um, computer repair and maintenance, there's three computers that are that we're responsible for in the planning office. There's the the desktop, Scott's computer, and then the lap and the laptop in that office. Um, and w one of the challenges here is when you get down to revenues. Um, we have not seen the revenues that we we've seen a steady decline in revenues here, and we honestly don't see. Is he making faces at me? No, no. I think I keep hitting my arm on oh. the keyboard here. Yeah. You know what I mean? huh. And we don't see those revenues coming up fast. Um, I would like to see those revenues coming in, but uh, you know, we. I, I'd rather budget conservatively on revenues, and if we get more money coming in, we say, great, that we have more money coming in. But to, to, to fall short on revenues, is it hurts us. Um, more than just planning, uh, planning the right way to begin with. Um, Megan, have there been any permanent fees since the end of the year? 
And that R0200 line, is that? Uh, some, but not a lot. Yeah. So, so it's that 14, it's 660 is. Yeah, because the winters is really slow. So right, right. The year. And we typically you'd start to see some of those permit fees now as build as people are planning for building, but we're not seeing that either. And that, I haven't seen the Mar I haven't seen the March numbers yet because March isn't over. But I think they had like seven or eight permits for the month of February. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's very very slow. Um, a um, couple of questions, uh, one comment, and a couple of questions. The the question is who. Under the administrative assistant, refresh me. Who does Hannah work for, and who does Molly work for? Hannah is, is planning and assessing, and Molly is finance and town office. However, that might be how it's broken out by the budget, but they do a lot of collaboration. Uh, if Hannah's out for whatever reason, Molly can step in yeah, yeah. and help yeah. with Hannah's stuff, and vice versa. Yeah. My other question is, or just a comment would be. How, how close are you in the hiring process? And, and from my own personal view, not those of any other board member, mm -hmm. I would say hold off until we make a decision. Yeah, not, um, not, not we haven't even, there? we've just started collecting resumes and we haven't even started, to, we haven't even scheduled interviews yet. What's your plan deadline or? Well, after you make your, right. you, you, we won't be doing that before. Um, and my last comment. I mean, uh, just to let me, yeah. uh, there's two reasons. Uh, one is because of the comments that, that I heard at the other um, budget meeting. And the other is we can use a little bit of um, break in our budget <coughs> because revenues haven't, haven't been coming in the, at the level we thought. Yeah. And having not paying out that salary for a little bit helps save us some money and keeps we'll get the budget to come in where it should be rather than under budget over budget the, yeah my my last one thank you is um last year we trained a person to help out in in the absence of scott or, or jamie mm -hmm. and there was no money in the budget apparently for that person and I think there was 5,000 that wasn't there or something. So is there money for that person that we've already helped train? You're talking about the alternate CEO? Right. Yeah. Is there that in there somewhere? I not mean, it's a shame to put money into him and get him so far no. down and then not use him. To, Ex to, especially if we go in a different direction, that's all. You know, I don't know where that money was coming from, but we don't have the inspections to do, you know, the, 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 the number of inspections we're doing, you know, is pretty minimal. The department head did not request that we put money in there for an alternate. And uh, in my opinion, when, mm. it, when and if you hire a new planning and community development director, that person should by default be the alternate. Well, so was Jamie, but that so didn't happen, right. so it, that ought to be another conversation but thank you where, where could I see the um, job description that went out that you're collecting resumes based on online um, in the town's website mm -hmm. okay. thank you and it's not it's not like we're getting overwhelmed with applicants I wouldn't think so you know um, we have we have a few, we have several probably three or four that on paper they you know they look they look good, um, but until you get into the interview process, you don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I was not in a huge hurry, regardless of the budget process or not, because we can use a little bit of buffer in this budget, mm -hmm. and and not paying out that salary for a, you know a few months isn't going to hurt us. But do you anticipate having somebody in place July one? If you give if you give me a budget, <laughs> okay. So, yeah, when when and where do we have that discussion of you know do we need a full time planner and well, that our April 9th or something isn't that our well, we, oh, I mean we, Monday we can Tuesday. throw it around a little bit now if if you want to I mean when we did a salary or I did a salary survey many a few years ago before any of the current board members were on one of the things I discovered was that. Rockport is the smallest town in Maine that has a planner. Um, 
So we're right on the cusp. And the tough part about that is that you can't get somebody who's had on-the-job training is looking to move up. Um, and so we've actually been fairly lucky in one case, incredibly lucky with the people that we've gotten. Uh, but it is tough because, you know, for example, if we're looking for a fire chief or a police chief or, or a town clerk or something like that, often you can find somebody who's worked at a smaller town and is looking to move up and have a little more responsibility and, and make a little more money or something like that. But you can't do that with a planner, at least not in Maine. Um, the other thing I'll say is that we have to be careful of the reasons we need a professional planner. Um, and one of the reasons that we need a professional planner is that our planning board and our uh, zoning board of appeals need professional guidance. Um, you ha don't have that at your peril, and all you have to do right. is look it's a little bit away to see what happens if that happens in the town of Appleton. Uh, when they had, a, they had a bad decision made by their zoning board, it went out litigation for many, many years and cost them hundreds of thousands of dollars in legal fees. And so we have to be a little bit careful of that. Now, do we need somebody full time? That's a question that I think is up. How that be, it could be? Uh, how receptive was Camden, or have you talked to them yet about? No, I have not. They just hired a brand they, new one. They just well, I know, but that's. I mean, if we're going to be having that, and that might be part of our conversation to say, hey, okay. Let's try it Init for a year. Initially, that was, you know, she was receptive to talking about that. Well, that might be a good idea to have some type of a dollar figure to, for us to, to uh, be prepared to yeah. go with or not. In, in the area, are there people who can work part-time for us? I mean, I think of the Jane LaFleurs and, you know, Jamie's still in the area. Yeah. If you need someone, can we find them, or is it someone that? Yes, there are. I mean, there are uh, contract services. I mean, we did. I did get a price from uh, the former planner that was here. Um, that he sent in. You know what? What it would cost. You know what? Part doing a part-time uh, planning position, but it was basically the same as what we're paying for part-time. I but, think. But you you don't get uh, because you're paying that to another agency well, that that would do that work, and I don't I think somebody like the name you mentioned, you know you you could get some time, but she doesn't work, you know she doesn't work cheap. Well, the, know, she, the number I had gotten I think um, through uh, Bill Nelpar's outfit where Jamie is was seventy dollars an hour, mm -hmm. and I mean. Even at 15 hours a week, whether they work more or less than that, it's still 30,000 less than what you pay with wages and benefits. Yeah. But you do, you know, you do have somebody here part time. And the, the the thing to keep in mind too is this is planning and community development. So there's there's the planning piece, which is different than the um, the community development, which is grant writing and all of that stuff. Um, the plan, the I don't have a feeling that we got a lot in grants. I mean, did we didn't. We, no. I mean, I know that we did with the, with the prior planner, we, mm -hmm. we did pretty well with yeah. grants. Um, yeah. But in the last couple of years, it, and some of that is that the grant making environment is different than it was a few years ago. But right. Wasn't Jamie already contracting a lot of the grants anyways? Through Bill. Yeah. So, no, uh, not a lot of them. No, though. not really. I mean, part of it is that if you get the right person in that position, they can smell grants, mm -hmm. um, and they're going to go out there and they're going to, you know, they're going to be very well aware of, of the various possibilities and things like that. But it's 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 a rare person who has that skill, quite honestly. But my my gut feeling is that potentially you may be able to to contract out the planning and community development services and. You know, it, it's tough. It's tough to find somebody that can do both um, because they're not the same. And you might be able to do contract out and get two two different uh, people uh, to, to to do planning and community development. But my gut is that you'll end up spending close to what we're spending now. Um, but you might get. You know, I don't know. It depends on what's out there for other applicants but you might get better service if you have 
you know, somebody who specializes in strictly planning and somebody who specializes in strictly community development. Um, one grant person mm -hmm. was um, over in Rockland. Oh, Rodney. Rodney. Um, Lynch. Rodney Lynch was great at writing grants. <coughs> he, he doing grant work. He was not a planner, and you know, one of the complaints that they got in that they had in Rockland was he he brought in so much money that. The, the amount of time it took to manage the money. They, they did. <laughs> well, that's a tough problem to have. <laughs> but that was one of the complaints, is that... Wasn't, didn't he fill in here for us, too? He did. He did, yeah, in, in the uh, interim between... Yeah, yeah and he did uh, some work for us, yep. Yeah. And so he specializes very strictly on grant writing. And, and if I had to say, you know, the previous planner, community development director, his strength was in community development and grant writing, and he, you know, he was really, I think he was stronger that way than he was in community development. Um, planning. Then, uh, then planning, yes. But he was still good at planning. He was still good, yeah. yeah he was but his, his real love and his real strength was in community development, grant writing. It's a little, you know, it's just worrisome to decide which way to go. Like you say, we've had very low activity, not much happening. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to see more happening. And, yep. you know, do you, is that, do you lead to your community development person to help with that? Or do you lean towards your planning person to, mm -hmm. to help with that? I don't know. Yeah. Well, what's That's, the actual function of the planning person besides writing the agendas for the uh, planning board or the zoning oh. board of appeals. What, what, what is it that they plan? They're, they're the expert in writing, writing code, writing ordinances, get, you know, um, shepherding the pr process through. Um, so, it's and, a, so it's a technical job. Yeah, and, and it's also, I mean, one of the challenges is it's, planning boards don't actually ha get a lot of time to do actual planning. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's hard because they they go from project to project to project. But in in Rockport, I think they have gotten some time to do actual planning, and you know, so some of the work that the planner does is with the ordinance review committee. Mm -hmm. um, does a lot of work with the ordinance review committee and the different boards and other committees. Um, you know, helping shepherd them through. And work, you know, the work with the planning board is is important work. Yeah, because um, it sounds to me like that is that's a, 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 a technical job that keeps you out of trouble and keeps the well, process and it's moving. knowing the laws. Well, well, yeah. yeah, I'm saying it's a technical yeah. job that keeps right. you out of trouble and, and makes sure the process moves along. Whereas to me, a, um, an economic development person should be charged not only with, with grant writing but with with um, the kind of of working with the comprehensive plan and with mm -hmm. the comprehensive plan committees well, that, to mm -hmm. write and to look at like the res site what do mm -hmm. you do with seven and a half prime acres that's plan. that's more planning well see i that's the that's a role of a planner yeah yeah that's the role of a planner uh the, and there's a difference between community development and community economic mm -hmm. development the economic development is de different yeah, but there is there's overlap. Yeah, there is overlap. overlap. Yeah, there is overlap, but they're not all the. It's not all the same. Well, are we looking job. for a community development person or a we're looking for a community development person. person? That's what the community job title is. And how do you define that? If I may it's ask. it's it's the grant it's grant write it's there's the planning piece and then there's grant writing the grant writing and community development piece, which is. Slightly different than somebody that you bring in that's just an economic development director. Okay, so so the job really, one person should be able to go to do both planning and. That's what we yeah we, that's what we're shooting for. I understand we're shooting yeah. for. I was just wondering whether that actually happens in the real world. Um, I just don't know. It ha it has here in the past. Yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, we had Tom Ford and then Bill right. Napower who mm -hmm. both were, wore both hats very well. Yep. Um, yeah. Camden has just gone in that direction because the person they had before they just hired somebody really was not a uh, uh, a planner was more a, I don't know how you would phrase it but they um, so it's I guess the answer is so, to your question is sometimes yeah, okay. <laughs> um, when it works really well it works really well yeah, okay. um, yeah we're we're expecting this person to wear two hats and sometimes three uh -huh. mm -hmm. you know so it makes it it makes it tough. 
to find Is somebody that's 50, really good. 50 or 60, 40, 70, 30? Well, that depends on the time the of the year. The problem with it is that the, the plant, and, my, and you mm. correct me if I'm wrong, but from my observation, the planting piece of it, if you let it, can suck up a lot of time um, in terms of, you know, dealing with applicants who come in want a building permit and dealing with all that and, and getting things ready for the planning board and the zoning board and things like that and, ju and just dealing with ordinances. It's a time management issue, I think, mm -hmm. um, where it's, it's very easy to, to push that economic development piece off to the side saying, well, I got to get this thing done by tomorrow and I got to get this, this bundle of work done by the end of the week or something like that, so I'm going to work on that and this other stuff gets pushed off to the side. So it's a rare person, I think, who can wear both hats well. Yeah, because in a lot of ways it's the <clears throat> economic development part that is sort of more important. I mean, I, I know getting the day-to-day -day activities is mm. important, but yeah. you know, if you got someone that's looking five or ten years down the road and has a vision mm. and helps the town with its vision moving forward, I think Otherwise, that's pretty much important. to plant. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's bring well, it it's yeah. the, the, the role of the planner is also to keep the, the planning board out of trouble because yeah. that's, that's it, when that's they make mistakes, important. it's it's expensive. It's, it's really expensive. And we had a case, I'm not sure when that was, Linda, when we were in litigation over the elevator. Mm -hmm. the, the nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dorothy. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. And and that's that that took up a lot of time, a lot of money, and a lot of uh, you know a lot of uh, ca political capital for the town dealing with that issue, where you know uh, um, you know a, a, a well-trained planner potentially might have been able to keep us out of that that issue. Trained architects should have kept us out of that. <laughs> yep. Well, so, can I ask a question? Yep. Line fifty six oh five. What is NFPA? National Fire National, National Fire, Fire Protection. Protection. Uh, okay. yeah. Thank you. That's what they mm -hmm. the monocle. So I think I mean, what Mark brought up is cooperation with Camden, I think, is something that's maybe worth... I mean, worth you know, you're already looking at it, so it's not... Yeah. I mean, we're doing it in other areas, so yeah. even if you tried it for a year at, yeah. you know... And one thing, I, maybe Chris can answer, but I know you're training your, your paid <coughs> firefighters in code enforcement. Is how much time are they spending on that, and how's that going from your perspective? <laughs> <laughs> Just got your answer. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> uh, I think it's worth pursuing. Okay. Because my only thought is, if there's a resource there that came there, maybe underusing, maybe we can, you know. Yeah, things like that you can measure. You can measure, assign a price to it, and just pay. You know, pay for the service. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Plus, maybe, you know, we can look at what this guy in Camden, what his strength, his strength is, and maybe if it's in planning, you know, then maybe we can spend mm -hmm. a little bit on our own to, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. work for economic development. Mm -hmm. that guy. I, mean, one of the, I mean, one of the strengths in Camden um, is, you know, their, their, town, their town manager, Audrey, that's, that's her skill, and, and she's a... Planning and Community Development Director. She's got her master's in that, and so you have. We have somebody next door that that's what she's a trained planning and community development she director. Has a, she has a job, though. No, I know, but but <laughs> but she could help us understand the issue. She yes, you know, um, there's a great there's a great resource there. I got you know me in numbers. I do have a question because. Yeah, on the wages for the said possible employee, it's mm -hmm. 64812 And by my little calculations, when you add 3%, it's 36 more dollars or, than what's uh, showing on the board. Uh, 36 more? Yeah. 64,812. Well, uh, the prior year number, they round to the nearest 
whatever. Well, I, yeah, I just used the salary as 64, 812 plus 3 percent, and it came up to 66, 756 and 36 cents. So it's $36. Yeah, but when I calculated this year's wages, I went on his hourly rate or what his weekly rate was now. Would that was 10 cents difference? I mean, 30, yeah. $36 difference. Well, I think, you know, when we meet next week, this is something, uh, yeah. us as the policymakers, yeah. we ha may have to talk about this. And do we want to look for somebody who is a little less than full time? Do we want to think about contracting out for some services? Um, you know, these are all things that, that we can talk about. Um, I don't know that we'll necessarily save a ton of money, but um, maybe, maybe there are better ways to do it than what we've been doing, I guess, is the point. Stevie. <laughs> I know this is nickel and dime, but I'm going back <laughs> to the, the little things and the idea that Diane's salary was less because she hadn't had experience in that job doing that here, and yet it, this is a new person, right? under this bu budget, and that would be a new person who might have other credentials, but not, that he'd be new to this job, and that, or he or she, and there's a, a jump there, so I. <laughs> that's not necessarily what we would offer to pay, though. No, okay, but that's what. That's you, true, yeah. Uh, I mean, it, but, it's. But, it's it, but the point is taken, you know, we may want to put a different cuts. number in the budget mm -hmm. there. Um, to, oh. to reflect the fact that we would have a new person oh. who wouldn't necessarily be built in, and I, I believe that when Jamie came in, and, and the, the actual 1450 number, I think, was a partial year. Uh, but before that, the prior director was at a higher salary, right, I believe, right. because Jamie was, was starting out as a new guy. And, and as, as I said er, earlier, I typically try to hire somebody at one rate and then say, when you achieve these, these thresholds, of, you know, I expect you to get to here, and I expect you to get to here, and I expect you to get to here, there's a pay increase for those, reaching those points. Um, but that should be across the board, I think. For, we do that with new, imp with new hires. Yep. Yeah. Everybody's benchmarks are a little different depending mm -hmm. on what their job is, but. Uh. In that case, one of the, 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 the thresholds for uh, that position was that the person get their certification mm -hmm. for, um, Code enforcement, right. when they got to certain levels of certification with code enforcement, they moved up. So I think on this budget, the, uh, you know, the number the numbers that we have to fool with are the salary numbers and the mm -hmm. contracted services numbers and when we decide how we want to go with that. Unless anybody else has any other thoughts there. Um, the only other thing we have, we have the Conservation Commission. Oh, um, have that stuff. Apparently the <clears throat> chair of the Conservation Commission responded to some of our questions last week. She was unable to be here tonight because she has a sick child. Um, okay. so Megan, I'll get that up in a minute. Yeah, trees. Um, and that's, let me find the page number for that. Just be a minute while Jeff gets it. Okay, I'm just looking to get back to the page on the budget where we were. Oh, page 219 is where that budget lived in the budget document. With what? Is the remaining schedule the same as what's in here? Has it changed? Yeah, as far as I know, it just changed the dates, but I think we're basically done. Next. Um, this week.
like the uh, Alan. And we're back. Okay. Okay, we're back. Um, so this compares with page two twenty, I think. Miscellaneous professional fees, she has zero in there where we had 250. Thirty-one oh five is two fifty. Thirty eight oh five. My guess is is that maybe the department had made some adjustments to what the committee wanted prior to the department had actually submitting the budget because some of these numbers aren't what was submitted by the department. Ed. Okay. Well, she's a little late to the process. I if guess, she wants I mean, to. I, you know, where, I guess, I don't know what to do with, a, with this budget then. Uh, because this is one where we had the supporting information, didn't agree with the budget, and we had a lot of questions that, yeah. um, this yeah, it's kind of too bad that someone couldn't have come in her place. <clears throat> Uh, sorry, Megan, what did you? I said this budget was also several months late, so hmm? we didn't have the time to go through it like yeah. we did other ones. Did she answer the questions we had about the tree stuff? Uh, I did not directly ask her those questions. I thought she was good. I have actually a, um, a whole lecture from my wife to give to her <laughs> on, on, on trees. I, I have questions in terms of how they decide what trees to buy. All, there, was a, there was a picture in the free press showing people trees? happily planting trees and all the trees that were listed as available are the worst possible choices for street trees and will leave us with years and years of maintenance and falling down trees and bumped on the heads of uh, citizens. So I have lots of questions about trees. the trees. Right now, my, my, what I would do is simply say, um, no money for the trees. Oh, and you need, a, you need a lesson in uh, horticulture and I can direct her where to go. So, but I don't have any other directions here, any other comments, because I haven't seen this yet to know anything, except all I know is everything that I've got here has apparently been changed. I don't know where to go with this. I, I don't think we can do anything with I it think, right now. Uh, I just found the other half of the generator money. <laughs> <laughs> A much better use. I mean, the water quality monitoring, we certainly need to continue that process that's that's all legitimate and and the uh it's about yeah uh, yeah you know the uh i mean i don't think we want to pull the rug out from under with dues and memberships and stuff it's not that much money where are they in? um but i think jan you're right i mean it, it would be nice to know about these tree what the tree situation is yeah. and to have it have it explained to us and well it was explained to me a couple of years ago I complained about it then, and I was told, well, they're free trees, basically, because right. it's a matching grant. But I looked up the trees, Dora looked up the trees, and um, none of them are, are, are street trees. There's a whole institute at Cornell University on street tree urban horticulture that would provide fabulous information. And I don't know, I just want to know where they get the ideas for the trees that they grow. At yeah. all. They presented to the Pathways Committee for some reason about trees well, and sidewalks and stuff like that. And I forget where they said they got where it. where this is going. That's yeah. all. Well, we're suffering a little bit, too, because the planning director was yes. involved with, was with, working with the Conservation Commission as well, and so we're, we're lacking a little bit there. So I, I guess um, maybe, maybe, I mean, we have a meeting. The select board has a meeting next Monday at 3 o'clock, 3 to 7, to start chewing through this budget stuff and going through it. And mm -hmm. that's a select board workshop. Budget committee is more than welcome to be there, but it's, it's our discussion. But if... Yeah. if Kim could come, um, then it would be nice to at least have some information there rather than just going through this and making, really making guesses. I agree with you. If you don't have the information, how can you, like, honestly make it? Well, we can't. Well, it's it's, it's hard, but, uh, you know, but if, if she could come, that would be good. Um, so I guess we have gone through everything at this point. Um, so our job is finished? <laughs> no, our job, job is just beginning. <laughs> this was easier than I thought. <laughs> it's a wrap. So next, next Monday, um, we, the select board meets from 3 until 7 to start really going through. And now we have to, to put the rubber to the road, go back, and 
all the things that we've sort of suggested that we want to do, whatever, we have to start having a discussion about that and, and working toward our consensus budget votes. And then once we finish that, then the budget committee get to crack at it to, to make your recommendations. And then we can, the select board can consider those again. But ultimately, the select board decides what goes on the warrant. May I, can I, um, and that's, you mean Monday night's meeting or, or in April? The April Monday meeting. Night. The April meeting is when we actually vote to put stuff on the warrant. Mm -hmm. So I, I have a, a question that we might consider next week. Um, I would like to look at everything except wages first and then go back after we've done all the hard work and then look at the wages for increases or not. It's one way to do it. I mean, there's, there's certainly a lot of things, well, a, I don't lot of other, a lot of other lines. Yeah. I mean, we can do that. And in the past, what we've done is, is we've gotten a number saying that, that the wage increases amount to this much money, so we know how much it is. And we can do that at the beginning or the end of the process, whatever the board wants to do. Um, just Some of them are out of our control, the union wage increases, oh, for yeah. example. No, no, I, I understand that. I'm just saying um, I don't want to be driven by other decisions by based on, you know, what the wage increase might be. I mean. Yeah, that's, that's not unreasonable. Yes. I think so, yeah. Yeah, he, yeah. He's supposed to be back on the 22nd, he told me. I mean, Whether that means he's landing here. spend his here. whole weekend watching a live stream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that means he's landing in the... You know, on yeah. the 22nd okay. or? But that's he hasn't funny. decided to stray across the yeah. north border. <laughs> he did want to go to see the demilitarized zone. That was one of his goals. Well, thank you, everybody. Uh, to members of the budget committee, I'm going to pick Megan's